first and foremost, Danny, the Danny podcast, <laughs> Concrete. Uh, since the last time I saw you, you kind of, we kind of had some very viral moments, bro. I didn't even realize how big this last episode we did was going to be until my phone starts shaking like an earthquake. And everyone's like, I see you here. I see you there. This person posted. Like it went, bro, like easily over a billion views on some of the content of the last discussion we had. And I kind of wanted to follow up, bro, go a little deeper. And I appreciate you bringing me back out here. Uh, shout out to Julian Dory. You guys were like five blocks away from my house uh, in the New York City area. And you guys didn't call me. I missed the party last night with every A-list celebrity in the world, Danny. After party for the awards in New York City. To be here today, Danny. So we got to make this episode very, uh, very educational, very important. And there's a lot of information we're going to cover in this. First, we're going to get into the clip of our last conversation that went viral and how silly it is that people are actually arguing on, on, on that content. And to refresh people's memories, the, the video clip that went viral was about how little people know about religion, how little they know about their own religion, yet they want to judge others when they actually have more in common than they don't. The clip wasn't about me propagating whether Islam is the true religion or Christianity is the true religion. I believe that's someone's personal choice. None of us have the right to judge each other except the creator, which all those religions say only God's the judge. But a lot of people took that content that you know came off our last conversation and used it as like a debating uh, topic. We broke the internet because we showed people that Jesus Christ spoke Aramaic and the core word in the Aramaic language for God is Elah or Elohim, which is also the same word as Allah. Meaning you guys shouldn't be hating each other or killing each other over Jesus name or Allah. They're all cousins, they're all family. They have much more in common. Muslims and Christians both believe in Jesus Christ, both believe that there's gonna be an antichrist who comes towards the end of time claiming to be he's God and the world will be in chaos, right? That's half the world that believes in that. Yet. All three religions follow the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments say do not kill, right? All these, and is anyone really following it? So I don't blame the doctrine ever because I know human beings are flawed. We make mistakes. We add to religion what we have no right to add. So I want to start this conversation by stating, I start this in God's name, the most merciful, the magnificent. I also want to tell everyone in the audience, I am not perfect. I can make mistakes. You should not take everything I say 100%, you should go and double check what I'm saying. Check the people I'm talking about in today's episode because where you get your information, most people just absorb information, never questioning where it came from or what agency or what company is putting this message out and who are they backed by. Like you need to know the narration, you need to know the chain, where am I getting this information from? You know, when we go to court, we can't just enter evidence into court. We have to mention, I got this from John Smith, there's a million John Smiths with John Smith. John Smith that lives on 2273 Main Street. Here's his license. Like you can't just show up to court without being verified. So what I'm asking you to do is before we get into these subjects, and they're very heavy. Today we're going to talk about where are the aliens. There are no aliens the way they want you to believe, the way the media wants you to believe. We're going to get into is there a God, is there not a God? How can you come to that conclusion? I'll dig deep into the occult. And why things are the way they are in this world, and most people have no idea what I'm talking about. And then we're going to get into a phenomenon known as the evil eye, which is why I believe many people that are public, your life's in danger, my life's in danger, anyone that lives a public life is why so many celebrities pass away, why suicide is at an all-time high, and the impact of social media. I call these phones, these devices, weapons of mass envy. And envy is why human beings are on this earth. And we'll get into that also. Hey guys, I want to ask you a quick favor. Over the last few months, almost 70% of the viewers of this podcast are not subscribed to the channel. The most important common denominator that allows me to keep creating these podcasts every single week is you hitting that subscribe button below the videos. I want to thank every single one of you who watches and supports these podcasts. I would not be able to do it without you. Please hit that subscribe button if you enjoy it. Now back to the show. So there's a lot to cover. It's a very important episode, and I hope people take the good out of this and not look at it as a way to debate who's right or who's wrong. 
I will draw upon my knowledge of the Abrahamic faiths for where I'm sourcing this information. Scholars like Hamza Youssef, Jordan Peterson, all these amazing people that are out there speaking very positive things. And I have role models that are of every religion, every creed. You know, I love the teachings of Mahatma Gandhi. He wasn't a Christian, he wasn't a Muslim, he was a Hindu. So, you know, these are people I've always looked up to and kind of where I've gotten a lot of my philosophy and my beliefs from. So to not give bias, to try to be as fair as possible. What sort of religion did your parents follow and what were you kind of brought up? So my family's from uh, what's called the Republic of Kosovo. We call it ethnic Albania. And we spoke a little bit about that in the last episode. So Albanians are a mixture of Muslim, Christian, uh, Orthodox, Christian, Jewish. Then there's even something known as the Bekteshi. There's a lot of little different smaller religions. So my father's side was like from a very small sect of the Shia Muslims, of which I did not believe in at all. Why? I didn't know much about religion. And it's nothing against the Shias. It's just... It was a really deviated version of that. And I felt more like a lot of those doctrines and that that version of, of Islam that my family it came from wasn't really the mainstream. Not even for Shia. It was like a it was like a sect of a sect of a sect. Kind of like I guess like Jehovah Witness, you know, compared to mainstream Christianity, Catholicism, which is the biggest, and then Greek Orthodoxy. So I didn't know much about religion when I was younger. And actually what led me on my, my journey to, to study religion was being born to what you would call quote unquote Muslim family that was really secular. I wasn't taught anything about religion in my house. I don't come from a religious family at all. The version of Islam that my, fam my father's side followed was not the mainstream. Very like basically, you know, an, an inter like I said, like an interpretation of the mainstream, but a lot of traditions added that not even regular Shia would follow, you know, because in Islam you have, you know, Sunni and Shiite, which I think is a trap. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, never used the word Sunni or Shiite. So anytime a Muslim puts a classification on themselves, they're breaking from the main body. And the Prophet told the Muslims, he warned them, towards the end of time, you will separate like the branches of a tree. And only one of you will be guided. Only one group of these divisions, just like Christianity became Christian, then Orthodox, then Jehovah's Witness, like and all these different, you know, Protestant and Libertarian. The same thing happened in Judaism. You have Orthodoxy, right? And all these different groups. The same thing he said would happen to you uh, towards the end of time. So I was not brought up in a religious household, but the tradition of what my family practices was like a, a deviated version of Shia Islam. I do not consider myself a Shia. I guess you could use the word Sunni. I am a Muslim. I try to follow the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad. I was not taught this religion. I learned it on my own through going to different places to study. But what led me on my spiritual journey was as a child, you know, you grow up in America, bro, and Christmas comes around. <laughs> Let me tell you how it feels to be a Muslim or a Hindu during Christmas time. And I feel like everyone celebrates it now anyway, you know, like regardless of their faith. I put the cookies out, man, and I, I'm waiting for Santa, and I would wake up in the morning, the cookies are gone, and there's no present, and I'm like, man, my life sucks. So, like, as a kid, like, we're singing all the songs, you know, we're in school doing chorus, everyone's excited and shit, and I'm like, man, I'm not getting nothing for, you know, and as a kid, you're like, man, I guess Santa hates me. But my family kind of had, like, they would celebrate New Year, like they would celebrate, you know, Christmas. But one day, I had some friends in school that were like um, of Arab descent, and they were like, you know, Jesus is in the Quran, right? And I had never read the Quran, never read the Bible. I was only in like fifth grade. I was like, Jesus, we believe in Jesus, man? They're like, yeah. I was like, dude, that means we can do Christmas, man. You know, and I'm getting all excited. I'm like, shit, we're Muslims and we believe. I'm like, we really believe in him? They're like, yeah, man, we love him. He's like one of the most important people in the religion. He's mentioned more than any other prophet in that book, by the way. Jesus Christ is the most mentioned figure in the Holy Quran, by the way. I don't know if Christians wow. know that. The most mentioned. There's a whole chapter called Mary. Peace be upon her. She's the most important woman in Islam. Literally, her and the prophet's wife, Aisha, 
who gave us so much of his life and his narration. I probably want to talk about that too. People like to attack the character of the Prophet Muhammad based on his marriage. They say he was a pedophile. He married a six-year-old and a nine-year-old. This is the number one way that people want to attack that religion, try to attack it based on his marriage and trying to understand a culture from 2,000 years ago. There is no exact age. This is the question I will flip to people that want to use that type of personal attack to try to dishonor or disclaim the work of the Prophet Muhammad. First of all, in the state of New York, the age of marriage was 13 years old, bro. They just changed it a few years ago. If you don't believe me, look it up. The legal age you could get married in the state of New York was 13 years old. Was that normal? Now, I don't have a daughter, but if I had a daughter and somebody tried to marry her at the age of 13, they'd be hanging from a tree, bro. <laughs> or they'd find him in the Hudson River. Right. Because that's just crazy, right? Yeah. Latino culture, they have something called what? Quinceanera. Yes or no? Yes, quinceanera. Most 15. people don't even understand what the, what does that mean? Well, why do they dress up their daughters at the age of 15, like basically like their brides, and then they throw like a party for their birthday? Because in that time period, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, you were telling the community, my daughter is of age of marriage. That's what that's from. Sweet 16, would you let your daughter, what person in America will let their daughter get married at 16? You celebrated Sweet 16 because you were telling the world, my daughter's of age. You can start to court her. Doesn't mean you can take my daughter and bang her. It means she's of age with morals, morality. You have the right now, she's old enough to date, to seriously consider marriage is where that comes from. So I'll ask you, is it normal for a girl to get married at 15? Definitely not. But at one time it was. Mm -hmm. Because the world operated, especially ancient cultures, when a woman had her menstrual cycle, she was now of age to be married. The minute they had their menstrual cycle in ancient, so people want to analyze an ancient culture 1,600 years ago with today's perspective, when meanwhile in their own backyard, these are the laws. And you want to attack a guy that lived 2,000 years ago almost, who all his enemies never once said, this girl you're marrying is too young. No, because they gave, they would arrange, there's people in Albania that were arranged marriage before they were even born. That doesn't mean they consummated the marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, I know people whose grandparents were engaged in the belly because it was a clan structure. It was like, okay, if I have a daughter and you have a son, like let's say like two different clans, but they're friends. Yeah, it's like you, Game of Thrones shit. It, exactly, your daughter's, your daughter's yeah. pregnant. Your your um your your daughter's pregnant. If one has a boy and a girl, you guys want to yeah. And they didn't ask you. It was all arranged. So just because he had an arranged marriage before she may have been the age of consummation does not mean that that was normal or irregular. That was very normal not only in the Arab world but throughout history. And I, again, go look at the marriage laws in America. They just changed them. Is it normal to get married at the age of 13? Or why was that the law in New York City? And that's only 100 years ago. You want to talk about 1,400 years ago. People's lifespans were shorter. And they did things very differently, bro. So that is the argument I will give to anyone that wants to attack his character based on that. And the people that, you got to remember, the Arabs of that continent wanted him dead. His own family wanted him dead. They offered him to be the king of all the Arabs if he would just accept, accept their pagan way of life. All these gods of Mecca, if you accept it, we will make you the king of the Arabs. He said, not if you gave me the moon and the sun and everything in it, there's only one God. Muslims do not believe that Islam is a new religion. The word, the concept might be new, but the word Islam means to submit, to submit your will to God. To who? The same God that we broke the internet with, brother. It's the same word in all three languages, and I'll debate anyone any time of the week. You saw it with your own eyes. He spoke Aramaic, Google, Aramaic word for God. Well, then why are you using Google to prove it? Well, prove me wrong. Go to the, go to the Aramaic lexicon. Go to the Aramaic dictionary. Type in God, it pops up there. It's not some trick or some manipulation, but it's to show you how little you know about your own faith and you want to judge others. And that's the biggest problem we have in society today <clears throat> around the world. People that know nothing about nothing making statements, and that is one of the dangers of social media, who are not qualified to talk about these things. And maybe I'm more qualified than most, but I still say I can make mistakes. I could be wrong. Please research what I'm saying because I'm responsible on a spiritual level for the information I give. In Islam, if I preach something to you and it's not accurate and you base your belief on that or not, I'm responsible. I may have been the one that led you astray because I gave you wrong information. 
I will be held accountable when I face God for the information I'm discussing right here, right now. So that's why I start with an apology. Please double check everything I'm saying. I could be wrong. It is your obligation as a human being to always question what you are taught, where it came from, the narration, which is very important, the chain of where this information came from, and where it could have or could not have been deviated. It's very important to question where you're getting information, not just in theology, but look at the world we're living in. Yeah. The news outlets, who's financing them? What is their agendas? What other associations do they put money towards? Maybe you can see where the bias comes from. And this is the biggest problem we're facing as Americans right now. Mm. What's important for people is not to believe what I believe, and I'm not here to push it on you. Here's what I want to ask people before we get into the heavier subjects of demonic attacks. I believe we are under full-blown demonic attack under the guise of aliens are coming. And we're gonna get to that at first, but I wanna start at the beginning, Danny, because it's important. Sorry for the saliva that shoots out once in a while. It's not easy talking for hours. It's all right. It's all right. So for me, I ask people this, and this is where I start my whole basis from. So, you know, like I was telling you earlier, it was the finding out that Muslims believed in Jesus that blew my mind away, and that's how I started my spiritual journey. That's how I started studying religion, reading the Bible, reading the Torah, reading the Quran, going to lectures, studying people like Hamza Yusuf, who, by the way, is amazing. People should really check out this guy's work, especially when he talks about the occult and the New World Order and all this other stuff. Amazing scholar, speaks multiple languages, founded a place called the Zaytuna Institute uh, out in, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Burbank, California, mm. and just a phenomenal speaker. Uh, he was involved in the burial of uh, Muhammad Ali by the way. He was really? born Greek Orthodox. Where's he from? He's from California. His parents were uh, professors. His name before he converted to Islam was David Hansen. Oh, really? And he had a near-death experience, if I'm not mistaken, when he was younger. And as he laid in the hospital bed, he almost died in a car accident, I believe. And he realized, man, I almost, I almost went. Like, this life really is like a joke. Like, I, I can be here today and gone tomorrow. Like, what's next? What's next? And he went on the spiritual journey, ended up leaving America, going, he studied every religion and he left like Islam, he didn't even think about Islam, it was like the last thing he studied, started reading the Quran, he fell in love with it, ended up going to like, if I'm not mistaken, Mauritania and learning Islam from the Bedouins and uh, became one of the greatest scholars I think we have, not only in our faith, but in the world. And he's such a brilliant speaker. I mean, he's done things with Jordan Peterson, I believe. And Didn't Andrew Tate recently convert his religion? That's what he's saying, yeah. Yeah. To Islam? That's what he's saying, yeah. I mean, I, I can't confer, but he's saying, yeah, I'm a Muslim, so. Yeah. It's it's very interesting. I guess everyone that goes to jail these days, huh? When we go to jail, brother, it's like they call it the jail religion. Like, you switch your religion to protection because, the you know, the Muslims in jail are more, like, you know, I'm not saying that's why he did it, but, like, it seems like when people go to jail, you know? Yeah. Well, he, I don't think he had to deal with, like, what normal people have to deal with when they go to jail. He didn't probably have to pick a side or a team. Like, you know, No, he was isolated, I think, be, with him and his brother. It's funny how when you go to prison, it's so uh, compartmentalized into, like, different racial factions. Like, you're either going to be with the Mexicans, you're going to be with the skinheads, or you're going to be with the black guys. And or you're going to be they, someone's bitch. Or you're going to be someone's bitch, right. <laughs> if you want to run solo, yeah, you're going to be someone's bitch. <clears throat> You're going to be Andy Dufresne before he got the protection of the warden and Shawshank Redemption, bro. I was talking to, me and Julian, shout out to Julian Dory. Um, we were talking about this the other day when we were in New York, walking around, seeing it, all the different types of people that are in fucking New York. Everything, bro. And it's like, when you think about what it means to be, like, because New York's just like this melting pot of every different culture, every everything, right? But when you think about what it is to be an American, it's hard to really define it. But when you think about what it is to be an Albanian, that's not hard to define that. When you think about what it is to be Israeli, definitely not hard to define that. I th it, we were talking about like, it's really these, these cultures or these people that have had to deal with existential threats that really define them. Like these other countries, like like Israel or like Albania, but America's never really had a real existential threat. So it's like, what the fuck is it anymore to be an American? It was like, it was really, it was really interesting to think about. We're in a very interesting crossroad, and um, you know things are shifting dramatically. And really, I hope we're here. I hope we're here in a couple of years, the way we're going. Uh, I've spoken about this on many shows. I mean. You know, we have empire sickness. 
right? We're at, I, I think we're seeing what it is after you've peaked and corruption sets in. It's like gangrene. You know, you're not going to die instantly, but your fingers are going to rot, your arms, are, and eventually you're dead if you don't take it out. We are at like the last stage of what corruption looks like, and we are in a lot of trouble. And all the symptoms and the signs of tyranny are there, and people are asleep at the wheel, man. You know, free speech is the most important thing. That's why podcasting is so important. <clears throat> what you do is so important. Regardless if people like it or don't like it or don't agree, you know, social media is where the public discourse is, and there needs to be a serious debate about protecting free speech on these platforms. I don't care if they're privately owned because the effect they have on everything from culture to voting to you name it, mm -hmm. for it not to be protected where everyone has equal opportunity to speak and you can't just turn someone off. I mean, it's a serious problem, man, and it needs to be addressed fast. I also think as AI expands, we need to start using uh, labels immediately, especially for music, organic, podcast, organic. People can use these apps now. Take your, you know, take, I could take your sound, Danny, mm -hmm. type into this one app, and I could produce a podcast with your voice, bro. Right. If I have your image, even make it like, even right now, I can do that. So I think we need to start using a label like organic, human made, you know, like immediately get people used to that so we can protect what we do, the arts, podcasting, all this stuff. Getting back to kind of where I want to go with all this, what, it, what, what fascinates me in all my studies of life, of pursuing is there a God or not a God, or is there anything after life? What boggles my mind is that most people follow their religion like a tradition and not because they truly believe it. Mm. I was Catholic, therefore my, you know, my right. son will be Catholic, right. and his son will be Catholic. And a lot of people don't even know anything about their religions. I am a, you know, uh, I'm Muslim because my dad was Muslim and his dad was Muslim, right? So most people just accept these traditions. They get together for whatever holiday they, you know, celebrate in their religion. You know, whether it's you know, uh, Christmas for Christians or Easter or Eid for for Muslims or you know, Rosh Hashanah for for Jews. So like, and they just follow. Okay, today we get together, we do a little feast or we do Ramadan, and they just you know, a lot of people just follow these things blindly. This is what my family was. This is what I will be. What I want to ask people is this. This is the way I looked at it. Why is it that human beings prepare for everything they do? If they want, you know, human beings that have some intellect. We prepare. We didn't just show up today in the studio and do a podcast. First, I had to contact you. Set up a date. Book the flight. Book the hotel. Rent a car. Drive, like everything had to go in order for me to be here today. I had to plan for it. I couldn't just come. Because most human beings, especially ones that want to succeed, we have to prepare for things in life. I don't just become a doctor overnight. I have to go to school, then uh, college, medical school, residency, then I can become a doctor. Because order has to come from order. But we'll get to that in a second. Where I'm going with all this is, there's people that contribute to a 401k that are listening to this show. There's people that or own their own companies or work in a job or in school or in college and they're preparing for something in this life. There's someone listening to your show right now that's in college to become a dentist or whatever the case may be, a lawyer or a financial professional in the banking world. And they're in college right now or they're in grad school right now and they're preparing for something that they want to do in this life. There's people that contribute to a 401k in their 20s. They're taking money that they can use today in their life and putting it aside so that they hope by the time they get to the age of 60 and they reach the age of retirement that they're prepared for retirement. They don't want to be not ready to, to survive in retirement without enough money. Mm. How many people die, Danny, never cashing their 401k out? Millions of people never even reach the age of retirement. They put money away in a 401k and an IRA. They prepared for a day that they weren't even guaranteed they would ever see. But they can give it to their kids. I understand that. But in essence, where I'm going with this, Danny, is that they're preparing for a day they may never see, which is retirement. I started my 20s. There's no, I'm 40. There's no guarantee I'm going to reach 60. My question is, are you not guaranteed to die? So my question to people is, if we prepare for everything in this life, how do we not prepare for death? And people go, like, what do you mean by that? Well, maybe there's nothing after death, Danny. 
But the overwhelming majority of this world, regardless of denomination, Hindu, Christian, Muslim, Jewish, Buddhist, ancient civilizations, Mayans, uh, the ancient Egyptians, all believed in an afterlife. The overwhelming majority of this world throughout time, throughout history, has believed that there's an afterlife. Mm -hmm. They also believe if you don't believe what they believe, there's a price to pay. If I am not a Christian and I don't accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm screwed based on Christian doctrine. I'm either going to purgatory or hell. Muslims believe if you know you you, you associate anything with God, you go to hell because only God is God, right? So it's like all the religions say: if you don't follow what they believe, there's an afterlife. That afterlife is forever. You're going to pay a heavy price. So my first question to the entire audience is: forget the nomination right now. How do you leave something like that to chance? If there's even a, a, a small chance that there really is an afterlife and there is a torment waiting for us, you prepare for a life that you're not guaranteed to see tomorrow. You are guaranteed to die, yet you won't investigate. You won't go and look. The problem is most people follow their religion like a tradition. And when that tradition fails them, they assume all religion is garbage. There's nothing that's out there that works. They had a bad, something horrible happened to them in their faith, maybe a bad priest or a bad imam or something that happened. And now they want to group all religion into one. They also want to make the argument, well, where's God when you have wars like, you know, Yemen, Syria, like where's God, the Holocaust? And that's a classic trap that people fall into, you know? And I would flip the question just like Hamza Yusuf does. Not where's God, where's humanity? Where are you? You got this gift. You gave me this liquid death. I'm holding the can. I can pick it up. I can drink it. I could throw it at you. You'd probably get up and knock me out because you're in better shape than I am. That's called free will, brother. What are people doing with their free will? You want to leave it to chance? I promise you there's an afterlife. Me? I don't know this. I don't believe there's a God. I know there's a God. Mm. I've seen too much evidence to support <clears throat> that there is a God. My only argument to people is, have you really, really looked? Have you really, really studied? Are you trying to judge a religion based on the actions of human beings, which are flawed, which can do whatever they want? I could say I'm a Christian all day or a Muslim all day, but if I'm killing people, I promise you I'm not a Christian or a Muslim. That's not what the doctrine teaches. If you take innocent life, then you have a guy that gets up there and kills a million people and says he's a Muslim or a Christian or no. So people look at what people do and then they want to judge the doctrine. To me, these doctrines are, are amazing. All of them teach you how to be a good human being. Every single one of them. The only core differences between Christianity, Islam, and Judaism is who was Jesus Christ. Other than that, they all teach you how to be more compassionate to man, man, woman, human, to be loving, to care about your environment, to be God conscious and aware that God sees everything you do, that you are being judged for what you do, that you will face the creator one day. That's what these, all, even the religions that are not Abrahamic say that they're, you know, what does Hinduism say? You're bad. You don't elevate to nirvana. You downgrade. You might be a, 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 a raccoon the next life or a rat or a cockroach. You understand? Right. Because you, you don't, and if you're good, you elevate to almost the status of becoming a god, right? Mm. You become, you know, you reach nirvana. Mm. The highest levels, I'm sorry. Um, I'm talking about Buddhism there. I'm talking about in the Hindu faith when you evolve, you know, they believe in reincarnation. So like if you're not doing good in this life cycle, you will go down to a lower life cycle. If you're doing what you're supposed to in this life, you elevate to basically a God status. Okay. So all of them have some type of consequence for, for actions that we do in this world, in this dimension. And right. that's another similarity that all faiths have, you know? So my argument to people is, if there's even a small chance that any one of these religions could be true, how do you not study the majority of them? How do you not go deep? How do you not look to see if there's something that actually after this life? Because if there is, just like in this world, if the landlord comes and says, hey, the rent's due, well, I didn't know the rent was due. I'm well, gonna kick you out of the house. If there is an afterlife, that means you have to put work to find it. Just like in this life, we put work in, we prepare, we get ready. Your death is coming whether you want to uh, think about it or not. Most people don't want to think about it. The only time they think about death is when they go to a funeral and they see someone, sometimes of someone that they cared about, they cry for a couple of years maybe, I have, for years. Eventually we get back up and we move on with life. Mm. How many people really prepare in the, in the way that I'm saying to stop and take a, take a step, disconnect from life, sit down somewhere quiet and like, I'm not going to be here forever.
I think it's probably the people like Yusuf or the people that get old or the people that develop terminal illnesses that actually have to confront death head on when you, when you have to confront death. I think those are the people who really who really study it and look into it and think about death more than anybody. I think all the other people spend all their waking moments trying to avoid the thought of death. I think I think everything that we do is a construct or a coping mechanism to try to avoid the thoughts of death. And the fear of death. Most people don't want to think about it. If there's one thing I know about my listeners, it's that they appreciate innovation. That's why I want to introduce you to Ghostbed, makers of some of the most cutting edge mattresses available. Whether it's their world exclusive massage bed, their proprietary cooling technology, or the patented materials they use, Ghostbed is always finding ways to elevate the sleeping experience. And as a family owned business with over two decades in the industry, they have garnered a devoted following. Ghostbed offers luxury mattresses without the luxury price tag, and they're known for their incredible sales. If you go to ghostbed.com forward slash Danny and use the code Danny at checkout, you can get an astonishing 40% off your purchase. You get a 101 night sleep trial along with free shipping and returns when you purchase your mattress so you can try it in the comfort of your own home. And Ghostbed has a dedicated team of sleep experts on standby to help you find the perfect bed. It's an unbeatable opportunity to enhance your sleep quality, so don't miss out. Visit ghostbed.com forward slash Danny today to transform your sleep for the better. It's linked below. Now back to the show. Right. And so something like you're saying, I agree with you 100%. I think getting gray hair is a mercy from God. Do I like the fact I'm turning gray? No, but I think it's like a reminder. It's like the grains of sand. You look like a fucking assassin and with that beard. Fucking Albanian assassin. I know all Alba Albanians are assassins. The, 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 the grains of sand through the hourglass is what gray hair means to me. It's like God reminds you, yo, you're getting older. Your ride on the roller coaster is about to end if you live your natural life. It's a, it's a blessing. It's reminding you, hey, you're getting older. Like, have you looked? Have you, have you done your homework? Mm. You want to just wait to see what happens when you pass away? So that's, that's my first argument to people. Like, are you seeking knowledge? Do you realize that you will pass away? Do you realize that if there is a creator and if any of these religions could be true, there's a price to pay on the other side. Do you really want to leave that to chance? And again, you might go through this whole journey and say there really is no God. I don't have a problem with the one that doesn't believe if they've done their homework. Some people, they just, something bad happens to them. They were born to a horrible family or something horrific happens and they go, well, there's no God. Why would God let this five-year-old die of cancer? Why does God allow Yemen, you know, to starve to death? Like, like there's a lot more to that than just that simple explanation that this makes no sense. Like if there was this being, right, why does... Bill Gates have a billion dollars and people are starving to death. Like, how's that fair? And a lot of times it's these people that are evil that have all the money, right? So people use these arguments to try to say, well, that's why there's no God. I would argue not where is God, where is humanity? We have a duty. One of my favorite quotes in the Quran is, do not oppress and do not be oppressed. That you have a duty to stand up against corruption in any civilization, in any culture. You have a, a duty as a human being to call out evil and hypocrisy and when you see injustice you're supposed to stand against it another quote of the prophet was uh if you see evil stop it if you can't stop it physically stop it speak out against it publicly and if it's too dangerous to do that then hate it with everything that's in your heart mm. like you have an obligation to stand against corruption evil that's whether you're a christian muslim or jew we have a duty to stand, and these are the things we have in common. And that's really what that whole clip was about, Danny. It wasn't about, oh, Muslims are right, Christians are, no, it was like, yo, we all believe in these people. Which position we put them in as king or just another soldier in the chain of God, cool. But look at what we have in common. We both believe in the Virgin Mary. We both believe in Jesus Christ. We both believe in the nuclear family. We both believe that there's a God who's going to judge us for our actions. We both believe that only God can judge us. So who am I to judge you or you to judge me? It should be the opposite. And this is another uh, a thought that I take from Hamza Yusuf. And I'm, I got to give the man credit that if you truly believe that what you believe is the truth and that these people are in trouble, then there's got to be a, a place of compassion where you actually feel sad for them if you believe that what you believe is the truth that they're not on the same path as you. You shouldn't be looking to fight with them or argue or debate, because even debate can be harmful if it's done the wrong way. Mm -hmm. It creates animosity. People need to have real conversations respectfully 
And just know that there's an overwhelming majority that's the same. They believe in Moses. They believe in Abraham. They believe in Noah of the Ark. Half the world believes in John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, Muslims and Christians. And for you to kill each other and, and, and hate each other, all of your leaders, whether it be Christ or Muhammad, would be ashamed of you. And I want to remind the audience, if it wasn't for Christians, the first Muslims were given refuge by Christians. This is a story that's never told to bring unity to people. So the first Muslims were being oppressed in Mecca, where the prophet was from, peace be upon him. He was being attacked by his own clan, by his own family. They wanted, you know, so they started killing some of the first Muslims. Their own family was doing this stuff to them. So they sought refuge in ancient Abyssinia. Ancient Abyssinia is today, present day Ethiopia. Okay? okay. These are some of the most ancient Christians, period. And that leader was a righteous leader. So a lot of like the disciples of the prophet, they went there. Because he told them, go there because there's a righteous king there. And he will give you refuge. When they, read, when they went to meet with the Negus, that's the word, N-E-G-U-S. You've seen it like, and the, they make fun of that clip with the kid and the spelling bee. I don't know if you've ever seen that clip. Yeah, yeah. That's the actual word for uh, the ancient king of Abyssinia. So when they went to seek refuge there, they came and said, hey, we want these people back. The, the people that were trying to kill the first Muslims, they went there like, you know, you need to give us these people. And they were about to be surrendered back to them. And then they're like, well, they believe in Jesus. Like we believe, and they told him the whole story. Hey, we believe in Jesus too. And he's like, these people believe in Christ also, even though they didn't call themselves Christians. And he let them stay in the kingdom, man. He gave them safety and refuge. That's a big over, That's a big boost in the beginning of Islam. Without that Christian kingdom, the Muslims might have been wiped out. When was this? This is in the, in the inception of, Christ, of of Islam. You know the, uh, the you know during the time of the Prophet Muhammad. How long ago are we talking? Six something A.D. Six. Uh, I, I don't have the exact date. It was like mid six hundreds, late six hundreds. Okay. 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 So if it wasn't for that righteous king. A lot of the first Muslims would have been wiped out. And these are stories that we need to remind our Christian brothers, our Muslim brothers, Jewish brothers that, hey, we don't have to believe in the same thing exactly. But right now in the world that we're living in, the evil that is coming for us, all of us, regardless if we're even from those religions, what is coming for all of humanity, that is something that should unite us. That is something that we are on the same page. And we need to remind each other that, they'll, of course, these people that are doing what they're doing, they want us to kill each other. They want us to nitpick on these little things and go to war so they can justify everything that's happened in the last 50, 60 years. These are the things I'm trying to remind people. You don't need to believe what I believe. I will face God on that day. At least I made a choice. At least I investigated. At least I went deep into my studies and my intention, because I believe God judges based on intention was to find the creator. I chose the path that I chose for myself. It's not me to choose your path, but at least I did my homework. At least I didn't wake up one day and say, ah, I'm gonna just follow. I didn't follow what my father's family followed. I, don't believe, I didn't believe in any of it. I said, this doesn't make no sense. And I went on my journey and I studied theology for a very long time. And again, I would never even use the word scholar because it's an embarrassment to even use the word when there's people like Hamza Yusuf, when there's people like Jordan Peterson. I have no right to even use that title because these guys are brilliant. Brilliant. And Jordan Peterson's a Christian. I love him, bro. I listen to his lectures. I think he's an amazing human being, bro. And that's what we're trying to inspire in this world that is full of chaos right now. So my first argument is the lack of knowledge, people doing their homework, asking serious questions. And I ask it again, are you not going to die? Are you going to leave that to chance? Are you going to wait to just see? Uh, yeah, You better do your homework, son, because you don't just show up to a test unprepared and pass. Usually you're not going to do too well or not as good as you could have done. So that's my first principle of today's discussion. Do you know who Sheldon Solomon is? I think I've heard that name. He calls himself the prophet or something. No, no, no. He's a uh, he lives in uh, he lives in New York. He's a professor. Uh, I forget the name of his. I forget what you had him on your show. I had him on the show. Yeah, about a month ago, and um, he wrote this this book that was a follow up based on Ernest Becker's theory, based on the fear of death and how it guides human beings and everything they do. And I asked him what after he did a ton of studies, like scientific studies on people. Um, when he like would remind them of death or like he would these weird little experiments, right? Where they, they'd 
put them in isolated situations and remind them of death and then ask them a bunch of questions. Anyways, long story short, this guy spent his whole entire last 50, 60 years studying this stuff. And uh, when I asked him, I'm like, what do you think happens when we die? And it was pretty, it kind of blew my mind what his answer was. He said it's, he thinks it's the same thing that happens before we're born. He's like, do you remember what it was like before you were born? No, we don't. He's like, I think that's exactly what it's like after you die. I don't think so. I think that energy is never lost. It can only change form. I believe that we are right. in this life to find the truth. That's the main purpose for us to be here. I feel like a lot of us don't really, like we're distracted, bro. There's so much distraction out there that, you know, you live in a place like New York, you're cut off from nature. You don't even see this, really see the scars, you know, the stars at night. You don't, mm -mm. You, you, there's nothing there to remind you of the one that created all of this. So my next principle is, you know, and I, I think I take this from Khalid Yassin, amazing lecture, what is the purpose of life? Khalid Yassin, amazing lecture that really had a profound impact on me in my life. And um, he had made this one argument, like, you know, why, why I believe there's a creator. Why I believe there's a creator is two principles. First one, if, um, if you lived by yourself, have you ever lived by yourself? Mm -hmm. And you woke up in the morning and you left your bed a mess. When you came home, how would you find your bed? Same way. You'd find it a mess unless you either had a maid or a nice burglar broke in and stole your shit. I was like, let me fix Danny's bed because your bed will not make itself. Because order, you can't leave something out of order and expect to find it in order, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the first principle is that order can only come from order. We had to combine together as a collective to create a society, to create rules, to create laws. This doesn't just happen overnight. It was with purpose. It was with intention, right? We can't leave things randomly, just expect everything randomly to happen in our lives. We don't use that strategy in our own daily lives. If I just, hey, wait around and something randomly might happen, you know, for me to succeed or whatever the case may be. My second principle is very simple. If we take 10 numbers, Danny, and we number them one to 10, like lottery balls, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way to, to number 10. If I put them in a box and I blindfold you in a zero light environment where you cannot see into that box, if you shake that box up randomly, chaotically, and I tell you, Danny, I need you to pull out number one, number two, number three, in a row, in order, this is basic statistics for those of you that don't know anything about math, 10 numbers randomly without you looking, what are the odds you'd pull out one, two, three in a row? Do you do? What's it like one in 100,000? It's like, no, it's beyond that. It's actually, if I'm not mistaken, one in 26 million. Oh, wow. It's almost impossible. 26 million. From that, it's 10 times 10 times 10 to the 10th power. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, what, where am I going with this? I'm with my family one time and I wanted to kind of get at the adults. So, I, I kind of used the children in a, in a, in a, in a funny way like, to have fun and kind of inspire them to, to believe, you know, in God. So, I took a box, I did the experiment. I put the 10 balls in, I got uh, $500 ready because I know no one's taking my money. And I don't gamble. I don't think gambling's good. I mean, have I played roulette in here and there? Yeah, but am I like a part of my life? No. I go to the family. I shake up the box. And I'm like, kids, we're going to play a game. You guys can't look in. You got to pull out one to ten in a row. You pull out one to ten, you get $500. Now, kids don't know the mathematics. They think it's easy. They're all fighting each other. I want a chance. I want a chance. Like, I'm like, all right, you go first, Billy. And they would go in you know, for three and a half hours. These kids, all <laughs> like I would say 20 little kids. The adults are watching me. Everyone's like, what the hell are you doing? For three and a half hours, because they wouldn't give up. They like they see five hundred dollars, they're going fucking crazy. It's like an Xbox, PlayStation, like they're all like, you know. No one pulled out the number one first. Forget getting to the one, two. For the entire time I was doing this experiment, no one even pulled out the number one first. Forget getting one to two. So like when I say it's like almost impossible to get to ten, no one even pulled out the one first for three and a half fucking hours. <laughs> So everyone gets disappointed. The children get mad. What was the point of this? You tricked us. You knew we couldn't do it. I said, here's the point. I said it to them, and I will say it to your audience. Open your bag. I'm going to give you not 10 balls. I'm going to give you a million balls in order, and you tell me how. If that sun was not exactly where it is in spectrum to this earth, me and you wouldn't be having this conversation right now. If it was one inch closer to the earth, an inch could be a million miles in space. There's nothing. Closer to this earth, we'd be dead. One inch further away, we'd be dead. It'd be too cold. The way the earth rotates on its axis, 
the seasons, the seven layers of the atmosphere, all in order, brother. The ionosphere, the stratosphere, each with its own purpose. It's like a canopy that protects us, right? Gravity. One million living species on this planet, Danny, each with its own purpose. It's called the eco what? What's it called, Danny? An eco what? Ecosystem? That's fucking A, man. It's an ecosystem. If we wipe out enough bugs, what happens to us? What happens to us? Forget everything else. If we wipe out the insects, what happens? I have no idea. What We're happens? fucking dead, bro. How? There's no more food, no more cross-pollination. Mm. All the creatures that eat the bugs, they fucking die. And it's, it, it's an ecosystem. It's in order whether you want to believe in it or not. Now, they want to say it all happened by accident. You wipe out enough of those creatures, we're dead. It's a system. You're breathing in oxygen and carbon dioxide. It's called a what? A respiratory what? System. It's in order. Without you even thinking about it, you're breathing out a gas that would kill you, feeds the trees. They breathe out. It's a fucking system. It's a system. It's all in order, man. The North and South Pole reflect a majority of the sun. You know, it reflects the sun's light back to space. I mean, I can go on for days and days about everything that is in order for you to be alive right now. You don't expect your bed to make itself by accident. How did all of this, this amazing, mm -hmm. look at us, man, by accident? I don't think so, brother. You can see the design. You can see that there was purpose. You can see that this was designed for your existence. And that's why God's the most merciful, because even though the majority of us don't respect the Creator or even believe in the Creator anymore, I breathe because of His mercy. That's my second principle. Mm -hmm. Order can only come from an order. You explain to me how all these die. You can't get 10 balls out of a box in order. How did all of this come into order for you to exist? You really believe it was an accident? Right. Really? Really, you're that foolish? You don't expect anything by accident in your life. Right. You don't leave anything to chance in your life, yet you leave the question of death to chance. You don't investigate. You don't do your homework. You don't dig deep. You don't go into... Even if you learned nothing, just studying Islam or Christianity, you can understand one-fifth of the world. Learning about the Chinese, their culture. This is where we're failing as so many people we know nothing about. I can study Chinese history. Maybe not I can understand how they think, why they are. They have more of a hive mentality than we could ever have because there's a, a pride. hive mentality? Yeah, like the whole as right. long as the country prevails they have that patriotism deeply rooted in them from the times of the dynasties man but we don't study history we don't care and we also study history not looking at where are we getting the information from who gave me this information who's the author who was he so this is my argument i do believe that we were created i do believe in an intelligent creator i do believe it is your duty as a human being regardless of our religion if you're a muslim you should study christianity if you're a Christian, you should study Islam. If you're a Jew, you should study and vice versa because this is where you can see the commonality, how much we have in common. There is no reason to kill each other. Any of these incidents that happened throughout history were by leaders that were not following the doctrine of those faiths. An example of that, no offense to the Turks, the Ottoman Empire. They were a nationalist empire. They were not an Islamic empire, in my opinion. Now, they may have done things that made the Muslims feel cool, but we had no right to invade Christian countries, period. But then people will say, well, they were a Muslim empire. The crescent, moon, and star is not a symbol of Islam, yet you see it on every mosque. Some Muslims may consider that a desecration. So where did that come from? The Prophet Muhammad had no symbols. These are the things I tell people, where do you get your information from? Do you study? Do you do your homework? Do you research? Who are you to judge another way of life or a faith if you know nothing about your own? And this is where the majority of people are, in my opinion. They know nothing about their faith. That is why that clip went so viral, Danny. It shocked people. They couldn't believe it. They yeah. type in the Aramaic. You don't. How do you? If you didn't even. I'm not. And again, some people perceive it too. But like, if you didn't even know the language of Christ, you didn't even know the name of it. How can you even call yourself a Christian? Mm. If you're a Muslim and you can't say a couple words in Arabic, how are you a Muslim? When the religion came in that language, like this is what I'm talking about. And then you have people that want to talk about the faith. They know nothing about it. They're not qualified. Mm. So we're, I'm kind of done with that, that segment there. So that's where I take a lot of my stance from. And I, there's a lot of overlap, man, especially towards the end of time. Christianity and Islam have a lot in common, man. Book of Revelation, Antichrist, a being that will come down to deceive the whole world, 
that he is God and that God is not God, that to lead humanity astray. There's a lot of talk of aliens, Danny. And I got a newsflash for everyone. I'm going to talk about the aliens right now. Oh, no, we're going to talk about the aliens. I'm going to show you an alien in real life, bro. And everyone that's watching this can do it right now. I need you to go to your bathroom, stand in front of your sink. Most people have a mirror there. I'm going to teach you a way to see the aliens that's going to blow your mind away. Flick the light on and just look into the mirror and you're going to see the alien. We are the aliens if you believe in God. If you believe in God, we, human beings, are the aliens. We are not the ones that originated on this earth. The story of creation, Adam and Eve, peace be upon them, they were cast down from the heavens when they fell into temptation. So we're the aliens, Danny. I got a news flash for you. You're an alien, bro. Welcome, man. Thanks, man. Happy to be here. I'm what? sure you come with a Christian upbringing. You've heard the story of Adam and Eve, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What did it say? We fell from the Garden of Eden, yeah? Right. Okay. So you're the alien, Danny? Yeah, but isn't, wouldn't every being from another place be an alien to you? So we are aliens to, if there's another civilization out there, we would be aliens to them the same way they're aliens to us. So we're all aliens in that sense, right? Absolutely. Alien means something foreign or not understood. Right. And that concept, I agree with what people say, like there's aliens and we're going to see them. Yes. But I'm going to use the Abrahamic perspective on this. We know from the Jewish, Christian, and Muslim tradition that before we were created, human beings, there was a species created before us. We're not the first species with free will. We always talk about how human beings have free will, right? I just talked about it a little bit right now. I can do whatever I want. Well, we were not the first species created with free will. We hear the word Satan. May he be far from us. May he be cursed. This is the greatest enemy humanity has. Before we were even created by the creator, this being declared war on us. He was full of envy, full of jealousy. Did not like that God had made another that God would come to love and design and instill greatness into. His spirit, he blew into Adam, the first human being ever created. The devil declared war on Adam before he was even created. Now, from the Christian perspective, and no offense to my Christians, because I love them, they say that the devil was a fallen angel, and they use the word fallen angel. That is, I believe, um, inconsistencies when we try to translate words from Aramaic, Greek, Arabic into the English language. When we think of the word demon, we only think of it from the English language. Usually when I hear the word demon, it means like evil, they're not good, there, there can be none that are good. And this is not fair to that species. The species of the devil, as explained from the Islamic tradition, is a being made of a smokeless fire. So it's a flame with no smoke or maybe electricity, we don't know. This species lived on earth long before us. They have free will, and there's different types of them. They're known as the jinn. J like Janet, I, N like Nancy. Okay. It's where the word genie comes from. You rub the bottle, the jinn comes out, and you make a wish to the right. genie. You basically sell your soul is what you're doing. The demonic realm, and the way we understand it from the Anglo-Saxon perspective, the Christian perspective, the you know American perspective is like there, there can be no good or but like they're only bad, like the exorcists, right? Mm. Demonic. Mm. That's not the case. There are species that lived on this earth before us. The devil, they were very similar to humans in the sense that they had wars with each other. They're on this earth in a parallel dimension. They're on this earth in a parallel dimension. We can't see them, not all of us at least. And this demonic realm is where I believe this alien agenda is coming from. And I'm, it's one of my theories, and I'm gonna get into this. So- Demonic realm, you call it. Parallel dimension. These beings interfere, they whisper. Are they all bad? No, that's what I'm trying to explain. Okay. They're not all bad. So they were very similar in humans in the sense with free will that they would kill each other, they had wars that, you know, okay. we don't know everything about their history, but there's a lot of it in the Islamic tradition, which is fascinating. And I'm gonna I'm gonna give the correlations to aliens here in a little bit, and and my my interpretation of what's really going on, I think. Okay. So, once we were cast down from the heavens, right? Because 
Adam fell into temptation. Then God said, okay, all of you get down from here. He granted Satan a second chance, not a second chance, but like he gave him more time before the end of the world to try to lead as many of us as, as he can astray. He hates us, bro. Okay. He can't stand us. The devil, Satan. Okay. Shaitan as the Arabs would call him. But before all that happened, he was the best of that species. So God took him up into the heavens. You understand? That's why he was amongst the angels. He was not an angel. An angel does not have free will. An angel is a creation of light, also in another dimension that we, you know, we can't see. Okay. These species are like the soldiers of God. They do not even make a move without being commanded. They don't have free will. So you have the species of the devil, they have free will. The angels don't. When God gave the commandment for all the angels to bow to Adam when he created Adam, the only one that didn't bow was the devil, Satan. The angels all bowed. So how could he have been an angel? Angel doesn't have free will. He would have bowed. He was one of the jinn of the demonic realm. They have free free will. Uh, you look a little confused like I'm losing you. What do I need to clarify? No, I'm wondering where you got this information from. So what? this is from the Islamic tradition. And some of it's from the Christian tradition. So this is in the Quran? This is in, uh, not in the Quran. And there's some mentions of this stuff. The jinn are mentioned in the Quran, but this is also from the Hadith. Now, the Hadith are the, basically the equivalent of what I would call the New Testament. Like the New Testament, I don't have Jesus' exact words. I have what Paul thought he heard, Luke thought he heard, John thought he heard, mm -hmm. right? Of what happened, right? Those are the testaments. That's why it's called the New Testament. So the Hadith are the Arab version of the testaments. Anyone that ever heard the Prophet Muhammad speak, and then there's a narration. The difference between those testaments and the Christian testaments is that they're preserved a little bit better. So in the Islamic world, the Hadith are like what they believe to be the authentic sayings of what the Prophet said. The Quran is solely the word of God, mm. which should be taken for that and nothing else. The Hadith should be taken with a grain of salt. Some of them may have been his words. Some of them may not have been his words. It depends who narrated the chain okay. of those sayings. Okay. So they would write, the prophet's wife, Aisha, said that she heard him say this. So the Muslim would say, well, if it came from his wife, that's probably more authentic than from Tom, Dick, and Harry who said they heard him speak. So they're preserved in that fashion. Got it. <clears throat> so a lot of this comes from his expressions of what he said the end of the world would look like, what the end of time would look like, and the correlations between the Christian and the Muslim perspective of the end of times, a lot of it's the same. What will come towards the end of time? The mark of the beast, antichrist, corruption, all the shit that's going on in our culture, up is down, down is up. Right. All of this was talked about in the Christian faith and the Muslim faith, and a lot of it overlaps. A lot of it, it's fascinating stuff. Why I think where people should start their journey is understanding the occult, understanding that there's these societies that have existed since forever that have penetrated governments, entertainment, you name it, okay? And there's an obsession with the prophet Solomon. Solomon's in all three religions, by the way. Solomon's probably one of the most fascinating prophets you could study. We believe that every prophet had a power. Moses had the rod and the, his hand glue as bright as the sun. Jesus, peace be upon him, he walked on water. He brought people back from the dead. He, you know, he did amazing things, bro, right? What was the miracles of Solomon? Solomon had the power to control and to command every living creature in this world and in the world we can't see. He had dominion over both dimensions, the dimension that we live in and the demonic dimension. In the Quran, it even says that he was building his temple and he commanded the demonic realm to dive to the deepest parts of the ocean and to remove pearls and, and, and treasures from the sea so he could decorate the temple with it. And these beings would go literally to the bottom of the ocean in a millisecond, in the flash of an eye, and bring them back these, these jewels. Literally in a second. It mentions the Queen of Sheba in the Quran. And it's also, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's mentioned in the Christian scripture also, where he sent for her to come to his kingdom. 
And he said, which one of you, and he's talking to the jinn, the demonic realm that I'm talking about, mm -hmm. and he tells them, which one of you will bring me her throne by the time he, she gets here? And then one of them proudly boasts, I will. And within the blink of an eye, this throne appears in Solomon's kingdom. So that when Queen Sheba comes, she sees her throne, she sees her own throne there. She's like, and we're talking about a massive throne. How is my throne here? And then she realized she's dealing with Solomon, prophet of God, had power over both dimensions, bro. This is why the occult has always obsessed with Solomon. He had power over this dimension and the demonic realm. Sorry to interrupt, but this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Verso. We all know how important it is to get the right amount of nutrition, exercise, and sleep as we age. It's something I'm really passionate about and have discussed at length with doctors and nutritional scientists on this podcast. That is why I use Verso. Verso is a company dedicated into translating scientific breakthroughs into products that hold the potential to increase longevity. I take cell being every day to help combat aging by increasing my NAD levels with powerful ingredients such as NMN, transresveratrol, and TMG. NAD plus is arguably one of the most powerful molecules in the body, but declines with age. Keeping NAD plus levels high helps guide longevity genes called sirtuins. Sirtuins are called longevity genes because by activating them, they support overall health and slow down aging related effects by regulating important processes inside of cells. High NAD plus levels can improve your metabolism, repair damaged DNA, and ramp up energy production in your brain, immune system, and muscles. Now you can't take NAD plus as a supplement because it's too big for the cells to absorb. But NMN directly converts to NAD plus, while resveratrol activates your sirtuins, which increases their attraction for NAD. These two molecules act synergistically and increase your NAD plus more than just NMN on its own. Verso also publishes third-party testing from each batch produced to absolutely guarantee you're getting what you pay for. Head on over to VER.SO and use the coupon code DANNY, it's spelled D-A-N-N-Y, to save 15% off your entire order or just go to VER.SO forward slash DANNY. Back to the show. When they do their rituals, is always on a checkered board. It symbolizes the two dimensions, the dimension of light and darkness, our dimension and their dimension crossing. Bohemian Grove, all these things that everyone talks about. That's what these rituals are to ball. And one of the most important people should study, one of the most important people is Aleister Crowley, the father of the American cult, bro. This guy, when he starts doing all his crazy shit, this is where you see that shift in technology also with people like Jack Parsons. These are people that you need to know, that you need to study to understand where we are today and why these things are literally right in front of our face because we've been conditioned slowly, gradually to accept this satanic shit that is not normal, man. Very slowly, very subtly. Our enemy has a longer lifespan than we do. The demonic realm, they live longer than we do. They follow us. They communicate. When you're dealing with some fortune teller who's actually saying shit that's real, and you're like, how the fuck do they know? Some of these people have sold their souls. Black magic is real. The evil eye is real. It's something we're going to talk about. It all comes from this dimension that is parallel to ours. My fear is, with everything that's been going on, now that they're declassifying all these documents, mm -hmm. and UFOs are real, and supposedly in Peru they were battling seven foot aliens two weeks ago yeah. and then you got people like Stephen Greer who want to say yeah it's all real these are demons brother we know that they can travel at the speed of light the demonic realm we know this from scripture we know that Cain the one who killed his brother Abel right first murder on earth we know that the devil based on these traditions shape shifted into a human being went amongst the children of Cain and taught them how to make music. That is where music was created. It's actually a demonic inception. So if this is where music comes from because it's the weapon of them. It's the weapon of the demonic realm. Watch a movie without music. You'll never cry. I promise you. You can watch a million things. You know, maybe it'll be a little sad. But unless they play like that inception music in the background mm. and then you see in today I lost my... Like, you won't feel shit without that sound. It's a very powerful weapon. So we know from some of these traditions, we know especially from the Muslim tradition, that the devil shapeshifted in front and went into the children of Cain and taught them how to play instruments and make music. The weekend has been going around since day one, bro. People have been gathering since the beginning of time on the weekend to dance to music, bro. Literally, since this whole thing started. The weekend has existed since day one on earth, bro. 
music is how the children of Adam were mixed again. So when Cain killed his brother, for those of you that don't understand, Adam had many kids. One of his kids was named Cain. One of them was named Abel. Cain killed his brother to take his wife. He really wanted his wife. He took her. He went down from the mountain because the first human beings lived up in the mountains. Took them down. This is based on, you know, Muslim and Christian, you know, history. Right. He went down and started his own community. Adam, before he passed away, commanded his children, the ones that were left on the mountaintop, do not mix with the children of Cain. The only way, now the devil wanted to get them to, to mix. So he went amongst the children of Cain, taught them how to make instruments. They heard the sounds. They would come out of curiosity. They would see them dancing. Once a week, they were having like festivals. This has literally been going on since the beginning of time. The weekend, the party. Since the beginning of time, bro. He, they see the, them dancing. They ended up getting closer and closer. They made contact. That was it. They mixed. That's how it happened. But the moral of the story there is that the devil was able to do what? He was able to shapeshift. He was able to change appearance. They talk about shapeshifters with the alien technology, the Anunnaki. We know from Solomon that these species could travel in an instant and not only go to these places, but bring back material objects to him to build his temple. This is in the Holy Quran. So that's the obsession of the occult with Solomon's temple, the inter intermixing of these two dimensions. I believe that because all of this information is coming out about aliens and all this stuff is that there will be an event sometime in the future where we will see aliens, but they're not aliens, bro. They are demonic beings that have attacked humanity since day one. Their mission is to lead us astray. Their mission is to make us believe that there is no God, that we came from them. This is where Scientology comes from. It all goes back to Aleister Crowley, Jack Parsons, Scientologist uh, Ron uh, Hubbard. Yeah, he. that's crazy. Okay, I just they learned, were all boys, bro. I just learned recently that they were all friends. They, they all spent a lot of time together. L. Ron Hubbard, Aleister Crowley, and uh, Jack Parsons. Tell him to pull up on this picture. Let me show you your grays, bro. Pull up Lam, L-A-M, and Aleister Crowley. When Who's he Lam? went, Lam is this being that he would communicate with and do rituals with. When you look at a picture of Lam, it looks literally like a gray alien. Okay, he drew this with his own hands. Okay, there you go. What does that look like to you, Danny? What does that look like to you? That looks like. Does it look like an alien? It looks like something from like one of the fucking cartoons my kid watches. But does it look like an alien? Yeah, little. it's got the alien-shaped head, okay. but what? He didn't call it alien, bro. He went to channel. He studied black magic. What does that say underneath? It says the witch. You cannot understand the world we live in until you learn who this guy was and who he was rolling with and what was going on. You want to be woken up to what's going on in the world? You need to know who this man was and his impact on the world that we live in today. Period. I believe much of the technology who, we have. Who drew this picture again? Aleister Crowley. Aleister with his own hands. Now, Aleister Crowley, he was a he was satanic, right? He called himself father of the he, occult, the Church of Satan, right? A lot of his followers went into that and opened all. Like, he was like their their pope, basically, bro. This guy. He studies in the Great Pyramid of Giza. You know, he went in like I'm sorry. He went to like meditate in these pyramids, right? From the Abrahamic faiths, the ancient Egyptians, right? Pharaoh was one of the most hated people ever by God. Who? Pharaoh. The, the Pharaoh. Pharaoh of Egypt. That's why God destroyed him in the in the in the uh the Red Sea, you know, when they drowned. You seen the movie Ten Commandments? Yeah. The Pharaoh told his people, I am God in the human form. You understand? I am God in the human form. Mm -hmm. Even though God sent all these miracles that people would say we're crazy, we believe in these things. Like, how can you believe, you know, that a guy walked on water and brought people back from the dead? Mm hmm you know, people think we're crazy that we believe this. They think we're fools that we believe this. And it sounds pretty crazy. It does go against logic, right? Right. For me to believe that, G and I do, I believe Jesus Christ walked on water, bro. I believe he brought people back from the dead, bro. I believe that actually happened. Mm -hmm. That's crazy to say that. People are like, well, we're so educated, you're so stupid. You believe in these fairy tales? Mm -hmm. It's a very complicated reason why I believe in all that. We can get into that a little bit later. But where I was going with this, people need to study this stuff, man. This guy goes into the Great Pyramid of Giza, meditates, these beings are contacting him. Pharaoh was the most hated human being to ever walk the earth by God. 
because he saw God's miracles with his own eyes and he still said, I'm God. So imagine the locusts are coming. Fucking all this chaos is going and he's still telling people, no, I'm God because that's what they believed. He was God on earth, mm -hmm. right? The Pharaoh. So he was considered the most arrogant human being to ever live because he saw the miracles and still kept saying, I am God. You know, it's funny because they, they discovered that Pharaoh, by the way. You know, they found who they believe to be Ramses, right? Who? They dug up this, this mummy, if I'm not mistaken. I forgot which year, but they carbon dated it to the time that Ramses would have been alive. Mm -hmm. And this mummy was not even mummified the way the others were, but perfectly preserved, perfectly preserved. They do an autopsy. They see the guy died from uh, this, this particular mummy died from drowning in salt water. Drowned in salt water. Really? Ramsey's. He's in the museum, bro. Hair, nails, everything. One of the miracles of the Quran. And on this day, O Pharaoh, we preserved you as a sign for those that will come after you. You can go and look. This is a guy. You got to remember, at that time, ancient Egypt was a superpower, bro. Yeah. It was America. Like Those pyramids were like the World Trade Center, bro. Like right. Beyond that, imagine even probably even more crazy mm -hmm. for that time period. To right. see structures like that were crazy, bro. I believe that the ancient Egyptians worked with that realm also. It wasn't aliens, bro. They were working with the demonic realm, bro. They were doing black magic. They were inspired. They showed them how to do this shit, bro. You think the, you think the Egyptians built the pyramids? With the help of the demonic realm. Not the alien realm, demonic realm. Okay? Remember, the devil's going to go with... What do you think the purpose of the pyramids was? I'm not sure, man. I don't know. I'm not going to try to act like I know, but... You got to remember, I also believe that maybe they were built, because remember, the jinn were on this earth before us. Maybe they built them and the Egyptians just found them, bro. Could have also been another theory that it was not actually built by them. I don't know, but there's plenty of stuff that supports that the Israelites built, but I don't think it was the Israelites that built those, bro. You know, they might have built other structures throughout Egypt, but my theory is that I think the demonic Rome was involved in the construction of those. Remember... They're going to help any civilization or culture that's leading humanity astray. Mm. They're going to give them secrets and power, and they do these rituals, and they do crazy shit. But getting back to the point, because we're going, there's a lot here, man, and it's like I'm trying to keep it as organized as possible. It's not an easy subject to cover. People need to know who Aleister Crowley was, bro. Yeah. You need to know who this guy was. <clears throat> if you think it's an accident that this guy's doing all these crazy rituals, orgies, all this crazy shit. When, when did he live? When did he die? He was born in England, okay? 18 something he was born okay and then he made his way to the u.s but first he studied in like the middle east he learned like Kabbalah and all this crazy other stuff like um you know ancient magic and all and like i said he was meditating in that pyramid are there photos of him near the pyramids or around the pyramids uh, i believe so i hope you'll pop everything in there's tons of pictures of him bro yeah he had government officials following him he had artists following him actors following him walt disney was his boy bro walt disney was his boy bro Wow. Okay, so I don't find it a coincidence that this guy who's doing all this black magic and worshiping the devil and doing all this crazy shit, being contacted by beings, is by accident, bro. Jack Parsons is the reason we go to space, bro, which some people debate. Right. But it's the reason we get rockets, mm -hmm. rocket fuel. He has a dream, Jack Parsons, in his own autobiography. You can read all this. You should know who Jack Parsons is. The technological curve was kind of flat until these guys start messing around in the desert, bro. And it goes like this after them, bro. Like skyrockets. Like, you know, you've seen the chart of technology and then it just, you know, like we were like this forever and then it just went like this. Yeah. Right around the time these guys are all playing games in the desert, bro. Doing all kinds of weird shit. He discovers rocket fuel. Okay, this guy is chilling with Crowley, one of his like disciples. He sees a dream were a being named Belial Dajjal. Dajjal is the Arabic word that Muslims use for Antichrist. Same concept. Muslims and Christians believe towards the end of time, someone will come claiming to be Christ when the world is in chaos. Everyone's starving. Civilization collapses. Like all hell breaks loose. And then this human being appears that says, I am God. Worship me and I'm going to save you guys. Antichrist. The Muslim word for it is Dajjal. It's the same concept. This guy, who's not even Arab, says he sees a dream that the Antichrist came to him in the dream and said, you are very important for my work. I'm going to help you get to rockets up 
and he taught him how to make what he created for rocketry. Why do you? He's think considered he did that? the father of rocketry. Right, right. He says he was contacted by a being named Belial Dajjal, which is the same word Muslims use for Antichrist. Now, why are they even talking about this stuff? Why does this guy even care to put that in his biography? These guys are all boys, bro. Celebrities are with them. Uh, government officials were practicing Thelema. That's the name of the faith that they call this, Thelema, T-H-E-L-M-A, Thelema or whatever. He wrote a book the, like about the will of man. So it's the opposite of what, what, what Muslim means. Muslim means one who submits their will to God. Mm -hmm. Their book is about man following their own will, which is what from the Abrahamic perspective is when a human being only follows their desires, you are not acting in accordance with the creator. Right. And then, and then Satanism is all about worshiping yourself, right? So basically, people go like, why would God make the angels, which are the most beautiful, like beautiful creation that can do nothing wrong? right why would god make them show us respect like bow towards us not bow the way we bow to god but like show us respect because when a human being acts in accordance with the creator when they submit their will and not their desire most men their desire is to grab every woman they see if they're willing to be with them and just have lust and fun and gluttony and right and all these things that's our desires right mm -hmm. When you submit your will to God, you suppress your desire and you obey God. When you follow only your desires, you're feeding into what Satanism is all about. So for me, I found it interesting that his book was about the will of just man, like you yourself, it's okay to do whatever you want and be whoever you want. Like So that's where a lot of this shit comes from, bro. Years and years of these people, their disciples getting into government positions, they still do these rituals. You've seen plenty of videos online. Why are they dressing up in cloaks, bro? That video was real. Whether you hate AJ, love him, don't like him, he went into the Grove. He got you footage of these guys. AJ? Footage. Let's not say his name. You're already in, enough, in a doghouse already. One of the most controversial people that gives news. They want to throw him in jail. AJ, bro. He's in Texas. Info. Oh. Come on, bro. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> We got to speak in code now. You're not in a free country no more, bro. <sighs> got to speak in code. So, right, right, right. Bro, you explain to me why these powerful people all follow this stuff, you know, but the agenda has been to convince humanity that we were created by aliens and not God. To the deceive. agenda is to convince I humanity believe. that we were created by aliens. The greatest devil, the greatest trick, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was not to convince the world that he doesn't exist was to convince the world that he's an alien. I believe technology may already exist and it could be the CERN project, I don't know. I believe they figured a way to open that dimension into our dimension. And that is why they are now releasing all this stuff. They preconditioned us with movies. These guys were playing around with these beings to begin with, but they're not aliens, bro. They're demonic. When people take ayahuasca, what happens sometimes they see these elves. It's not elves, bro. You just saw demons. The reason some of them are nice is because, like I told you earlier, they have good, they have free will. You might have came across the ones that are actually nice. The ones that are aligned with Satan, they're evil, bro. They, you know, so people go into these trips, man. I had I can't mention her name. She was in a big Hollywood movie. She hits me up. She's like, I'm having nightmares. I'm like, what did you do? She's like, I took ayahuasca and I'm just seeing the most horrific nightmares I have ever seen in my life. I cannot sleep. I'm like Freddy Krueger, but she's like terrified to go to sleep. She performed some prayer. I sent her some water to cleanse herself with, to like baptize basically. The next day she slept perfect. She's like, I don't know what you did, but it worked. She like basically cleansed. This realm is real, Danny. These people have been worshiping, I believe, and working with these beings for a very long time. This is a demonic agenda to destroy humanity, to make us go, because the devil's always going to make us go against what God made us. God made us beautiful. He made us together. He made us in pairs. He made us binary, man and woman, mm. right? And we are now at the end, I believe, of a very corrupt time we're living in. I believe there is no way out for us. I know we were sports, our duty to stand up against injustice. I really think that we're towards the end of time. I don't think humanity, I know this sounds crazy to people, but I think that based on the signs of the end of the world in Christianity and Islam, Islam is very specific, by the way. 
some of the signs in Islam. When buildings touch the sky in the Arab world, he said, the day will come where the pagan Arabs, you know, like the, not the, but the Arabs will like make buildings that touch the sky. And as soon as they build one, they'll build another and they'll compete with each other. Now Saudi Arabia is building the biggest building on earth mm -hmm. and they're going to boast about it. He said this 1400 years ago. He said that they will come when dishes communicate. You know, they're going to talk to each other and families will be torn apart. The word he used back then is the word that the Arabs use today for satellite television, bro. Dishes will talk. He said they're going to hang up mats on their walls. Like you have this TV, it looks like a, he's like, they're going to hang them up. And he, he used his hands. He made like a rectangle. They're going to put them on the wall and it's going to destroy their souls. Because all you see on it is filth, Danny. These are his words, bro. You read these, these, these uh, prophecies, they're amazing, man. He said that uh, men will become women, women will become men. He said that, um, just I mean, you just got to go study the signs of the end of the world and, and Christianity and Islam. It'll blow your mind away. How do you think we went down this path, though? Do you think, do you think there, at some point there was a fork in the road where we could have gone down another path? Following desire, Danny. What I was trying to say earlier is that why did God make the angels bow to humanity? Because when a human being, out of their own free will, chooses to submit their desires to follow the creator, they are higher than the angel because the angel cannot sin. That's why the devil was not a fallen angel. The, the devil had free will. Mm. When a human being acts according to the gift that God gave them, which is intelligence, they are higher than all of creation. When a human being only acts upon desire, eating, drinking, sucking, fucking, is that all there is to life, Manny? Eating, right? Tony Montana said it in the restaurant. Is, <laughs> is this all there is to life, huh? Eating, <laughs> drinking, sucking, fucking. I can't even have a little kill with her, man. I got a zombie for a wife. We become zombies, bro, because all we do is follow our desire. Eat, drink, suck, fuck. We don't care about no one else, nothing else. We become lower than the animals because animals act like that. Animals don't use the, they don't have intellect. They only have instinct and desire. They eat, drink, suck, fuck. So when a human being, that's all, and it's scary. They, they call us consumers, cattle. When a human being only follows their desires, they are lower than the animals. When a human being uses the intellect that the creator gave us and acts in accordance with that, they are higher than even the angels because he chooses, she chooses to submit their desire to follow God. When we only act upon desire, eat, drink, suck, fuck, we are lower than the animals because they don't possess our intellect. Danny's like, I don't know why the fuck I bought this. <laughs> Danny's like, this guy's lost his fucking thing. Does uh, any of this resonate with you, boy? You fall asleep on me. No. Yes. Oh, yeah. Let's get that way. Danny, you think I'm out of my mind? No. Yeah. You, you think got, people can follow because it's too definitely much out information? Of your mind. <laughs> There's a lot here, bro. Bro, there are no aliens. Human beings are the aliens. We fell from the heavens. The demonic realm is positioned to try to come into this dimension. I believe they will. The Christians call it the bottomless pit. I can't say for CERN if CERN is 100% the machine that's going to do it, but they're building more and more of them. China's building one. They're building one in the U.S. That is the largest machine on the face of the Are planet. Are you talking about the... Paul John Collider. The Collider, yeah. That's correct. The particle collider. I believe they figured out a way to create black holes. Black holes, I believe, are nothing more than a doorway to a different dimension. They used to be that they think it sucks you in and that's it. Yeah. I believe this is how these demonic creations, even angels, can very quickly travel. What do you think about people who have the ability to see some of these phenomena? Do you think that they have, do you think there's something in them genetically or in their brain where they can sort of like tap into another dimension and see UFOs or see aliens I or believe kind of communicate with something else? These beings can like inspire thought in us or what you would call telepathy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so, you're talking about like the muse. So like, you know how like we always show the cartoon where it's like the, the angel and the devil on your shoulder? Yeah. I believe that's 100% real. I don't believe, I believe that these beings literally, what you would call telepathy, they inspire thought into the heart of man mm. and woman. These thoughts you get like, you know, should I, I'm, I'm married, man, but the, damn, she's hot. You know, this girl's hot. Maybe I should, you know, sh sh even though I'm married, and there's like that desire, like they feed these thoughts. They don't make you do it, but they like, basically like inception, they, they plant thoughts in your mind that seem like a good idea, but it's really not a good idea. Right. 
So they use some of that on us. They can possess objects. They can possess people that allow themselves to be possessed. I believe there's rituals. We know that from Solomon's temple, they learned the ancient arts of black magic, that it was buried under his temple. Legend has it the Knights of Templar went down there and found it. And that's kind of how this all started. We don't know for certain, but we know that there was manuscripts. We know that Solomon told his people at that time that we're practicing the arts, black magic. It's mentioned in the Quran that there's black magic that can separate a man from his wife. We know that the devil has an army that only, like he has armies, bro, legions that literally focus on certain types of sin. One of his armies only focuses on divorce. One of his armies only focuses on murder. Every day they come back. We know his throne is on water based on the Islamic tradition. Some of the scholars believe it's either the Devil's Sea, literally, or the Bermuda Triangle. We know that the Devil's throne is on water, on this earth. Different dimension, but on this earth, from the Abrahamic perspective. There is, in my opinion, a true agenda because of people like this that were very influential in our world, bro, to deny these people, to deny Aleister Crowley, his impact, the people that were around him on modern science, on rocketry, on all this stuff, bro. We would not have this technology without satellites. It all goes back to this guy. I why, would, why, why would the Antichrist give Jack Parsons the technology or the idea to create rockets? I don't know. But what I do know is if they're doing weird rituals, if they're doing sacrifices, whatever the fuck they did, none of us were there, brother. There's crazy shit going on on this earth, brother. Mm. There's a lot of kids missing, bro. There's a lot of things we can't explain, bro, that people are trying to like wake people like, yo, guys, this is not normal. You're seeing shit in award shows and music and the one eye, which, by the way, the symbol in Islam for the Antichrist is one eye. Why do they all, they all do this shit and it's in your fucking face. It's the eye of Ray, bro, the sun god, bro. It's all there, man, the information. It took years, and I, I really don't feel like I did this justice the way I, I, I was intending, because it's a very complicated subject, and it can seem, seem like you're out of your mind and you're crazy, and I would just tell people who don't understand what I'm saying, who might think I'm like off the wall, I don't take any drugs, I don't drink alcohol, I'm not crazy. It's hard to explain something in such a condensed amount of time. I told you in the beginning of this, please don't take anything I say for real until you go study yourselves. Don't take what I'm saying. I'm just giving you some cliff notes from my life of what I believe is going on and what I think is gonna happen. And I think what's coming for all of us, brother. I believe we're on the last days of this nation, bro. Now, whether it exists physically after whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen, I do not know. I know that they want one system. I know they want it for the whole world. I know that the Antichrist can only rule if none of these countries have sovereignty. That he has to be the supreme being to rule the earth, control all money, all products, all stuff. I know blockchain can do that. I know it's terrifying. Once I understood crypto and blockchain and what could be coming for all of us, you guys better wake up. You better pay attention. You think they made crypto. They told you the story of this Japanese wizard. He's a wizard. He lives in a cave. He made this coin. It's called Bitcoin. Because if they told you that crypto was going to enslave you, you would never use it. Some of you are so stupid, you probably still would. So they had to give you a story. There was this wizard. He's like the Wizard of Oz. He made a coin called Bitcoin. How, how would crypto enslave us? Do you know how blockchain works, bro? Kind of. I have a loose understanding of it. It's like a universal ledger, like nothing can be hidden from it. Right, exactly. And mm. I'm not saying, and, I, and again, so forgive me for using like the Bitcoin itself. The concept I understand. Is crypto. Right, crypto. Open source. I was saying, Everyone I was, sees everything. shout out to Matt Cox. I was on his show too, a couple other shows. I said, listen, once I understood what blockchain was, now they announced central banking digital currency. I said, do you think they would ever allow something that they can't control in our possession? They would destroy it. Yeah, but you know, the coins are doing good. Yeah, why are the coins doing good, bro? Or why did they do better than when people bought them for nothing? Because you had people like Elon Musk, we're going to accept this coin now. Mm -hmm. This company, we're going to accept this. All it takes is one rule. No U.S. corporation can use this type of coin. All those coins crash overnight, bro. You've seen the scandals that have gone on in crypto, all this shit. So yeah, but that was just a reaction to what the blockchain or what cryptocurrency could be. The bottom line is the way I understand is they can program what you eat, what you like, literally how much meat. This is where it's all going, brother. Under the guise of, I, my opinion, global warming, climate control. Don't say that word. It all, it all ties in. 
And the only way it can work is if we're all on one system, one grid, one currency, one world government. Do you, you don't believe there's a push for one world government? Yeah, I do. Okay. So America's in the way. America has been- But there. I don't see how crypto or blockchain could be, could hurt us. I what's, feel like it- yeah, what's, I, What can I hide easier, cash or crypto? There's always a cash. trail in crypto. Cash, but okay. cash is controlled by the US. Cash it is, is, but could I put like $100 in my pocket and go over a border with it? And no, yeah. one, no one would know in that country I have $100 on me. Right. But you could also, you can do the same thing with your cryptocurrency. You can keep it on one of those little drives. The wallets or whatever. The but wallet, there's always yeah. a trail and blockchain to use it in that world, right? My understanding of it mm -hmm. and where it could go is like eventually it's like no matter what. Yeah, you could keep it separately in a wallet and it's not plugged into the system. Mm -hmm. But when you go back in and cash in on the on the blockchain, right? There's a there's a uh, what do you call it? Um, ledger. A ledger of the transaction. Right. So it's not like what's going on right now. It's like where I know it can go and where it will go. You understand? Mm -hmm. I believe there's going to be central banking digital currencies. They're going to lot based on the guise of climate control. We're eating too much meat. The cows are farting too much. You only get one steak a month. You fuck up, you don't play their game, they take away your credits, it's all done instantly, there's no way to... That's where I believe this is all going, and that's also a antichrist type system based on the explanations of Christianity and Islam of how this guy will control the whole world. You can't buy or sell unless you're in that game, in that system, and accept... So I think this is where it's all going, brother, and it's all... I think what, what a lot of us have is we only see one or two tiles of the whole mosaic, and we don't see the entire mural. I notice there's something wrong here. I notice there's something that could be wrong here. And very few of us can see the whole the whole mural and be like, oh my God. It took me 20 years to kind of figure it out. And people might be watching saying, this guy's out of his fucking mind. <laughs> All I'm saying is, don't leave nothing to chance. You're not guaranteed to live forever. Don't just assume that what you know is the truth if you haven't looked at anything else. Because it should only confirm what you believe to be true or not. You know, regardless of what denomination you are. Study these people's names I gave you because the it's like the wormhole you're about to go down if you really go deep into what these guys have done and their impact. You tell me where they got. How did this guy wake up one day and invent this rocketry type stuff, bro? Right. He's telling you we were doing these different rituals, this being came. He's drawing pictures of a thing that looks like an alien. We know Scientologists say that aliens are in the volcanoes. They created us. Supposedly that's what their mm -hmm. faith. So they're all together, one group. Walt Disney, right? These guys are all together and all these weird things start happening technologically. I don't find it to be a coincidence, bro. Why all of a sudden now you're releasing all this information? Why? Right. I think they figured a way to bring that dimension into this dimension. You're going to see things that boggle, boggle your mind, Danny. You might even see your dead grandfather, but it's not your dead grandfather. It's a manifestation through a demonic being that has the power to shapeshift. We've cured death. You see, we are God. I mean, this could be one of the ways they fool humanity to take the Antichrist instead of believing in God. These are just theories. I'm not saying everything I say is going to happen exactly the way I'm saying it. All I'm saying is your radar should be on right now. And if you're not feeling nothing, if you have no empathy, no empathic uh, uh, capabilities, it means your spiritual heart is dead. If you're watching things that are disturbing and it doesn't bother you, you've been desensitized. Mm -hmm. If you're watching things and you feel no emotion, your heart is dead because when you kill what they call the third eye, your heart dies, your soul, you don't feel nothing. You're alive, but you're numb, which leads me to the evil eye. So many famous people die from this phenomenon, thinking they have mental illness, thinking they have spiritual, you know, like um, physical sickness. No, they don't. The evil eye is a concept that exists in all three of the Abrahamic faiths. Hold on. Hold that thought. I got well, to take Can a leak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tap me in. We're in the Bolshevik war right now, bro. And right now what's coming up is the all the pride stuff is going to be... Okay, so I had this woman come on my podcast. Her name's Mel Kay. And we had gotten in real trouble on this show before because we talked about this one family that I will not name, okay? And every time we named this family, the four tech gods all came down and just fucked my show. Is just the Rothschilds? All of... No, Don't no. Say hey, it. I'm hey, not hey. saying their name, bro. Brian's not, trying to tank his own show. Yeah. Isn't that wild? That's yeah. how much he loves the deep state. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so she comes out again. We just mentioned what happened on the show. They do it to us again. They do it to us again. We just mentioned their name. Go, you remember when we talked about them and they took... 
it happens again. Damn. So she. So what are they doing when this happens? Let me say they do this to you. What do they do to you? Okay. So on app. So Apple, Google, Twitter, and Facebook all effed me. How so? Like okay. shadow ban, suppression? No, no, even no, how worse. So? Even worse. So on uh, on Apple, they listed my podcast that no one listened to it for like, th- like they showed nobody listening to the podcast. So they blocked people from listening. No, they, to they won't like, show when the you downloads. go to like see what your down how your your, your podcast is doing. It mm-hmm. listed nobody, not, not just one episode multiple episodes i got strikes and deletes on my youtube channel and all my facebooks i couldn't get into my facebook whoa yeah so it was just like boom 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 all on one thing when i named what did you mention that this family had done that was so egregious this is funny because it involves it involves something to brian that basically this family is so rich that people think that the cfr is just basically their board of trustees of cfr company the cfr foreign relations They're the, your on, babysitters, dude. bro. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, dog? Right. They're the people yeah. that taught you how to jerk yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. They're the ones who taught you how to tie your fucking yeah, shoes and shit. My favorite Joe's like, you don't believe in conspiracy theories because you love your dad. Remember? <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, Mel K, Mel K comes on my show, and she's like, "I've been, and this is." She goes, "I've been talking to some people in the intelligence, and they go, this gay pride stuff is going away, and the next thing you're going to see are immigration riots. This is going to be right around the the next election. So hand to God, we do this episode. Next day, Starbucks is like, we're banning all the pride stuff." And now you start seeing these little, they're putting little breadcrumbs out, man. Little breadcrumbs. Oh, I saw this one thing in Chicago. Oh, yeah. Illegal immigrants are upset about where they're staying. And these illegal immigrants who speak no English are holding up perfectly written English signs saying we're tired of how we're being treated. And now you're starting to see this over and over again. Eric, so everyone's always like when when all these Republican governors are like sending these, these immigrants all over over the country and it's like yeah you're showing those democrats bro they're moving assets i know it sounds crazy but that is 100 what is percent what do you mean well, they're moving assets what do you dude, mean dude these guys coming into the country bro there's have you seen them a lot of them are chinese and a lot of them are military Russian people too. and i'm telling you they're moving and this is what's going to be right around 2024 election immigration riots people going nuts and it as as listen to this and you'll start seeing all the little breadcrumbs being put out may i give you another scenario no i give you another possible scenario i hate to piss on your parade what if we do have open borders thank you joe biden and and a complete disaster down the border and so governors like greg abbott are going not how about you guys want a taste of what we're dealing with hey new york here you go they, they bust thirteen thousand immigrants in new york i saw Eric my own eyes we don't have the instant station yeah this. brian and that's a good way to take like a refugee camp, camp in the middle of our city border. dude yeah that's what they want you to that's think that's think, how you dude. get into <laughs> this is brian look i'm a puppet master <laughs> I'm, I'm telling doing. you, that's what they want you to buy, think. You're buying it. Oh, I thought they're, I was no, moving you're the assets, bro. You're the puppet. They're moving what assets. Do you mean, like military people? You, oh, dude, man. study the Bolshevik War. It is happening Bolshevik in real Revolution? time. What is the Bolshevik 100%. War? Communism take over. I just wanted to get that out Where? to everybody. Because like I'm going to Stephen. Just like how communism expanded. The Bolshevik War? Yeah. Where was that? Where was this? The former USSR. Oh, okay. That's how like they came into power. So what he's basically describing is that like all these things that we see in the media and all these riots and all the different things that divide people is all intelligence run. It's all run by intelligence to divide society. And basically, like from what I've what have had people explain to me before is that there's like layers to it, right? You have like the normal everyday people in society, like you and me, useful idiots. Then you have then you have above that you could have useful idiots, people that are are known who have followings or are public people who can get influenced. Then you have intelligence. There's a layer above that pulling, you know, pulling strength. Then you have, this is an out there theory that I've heard smart people explain to me that above the intelligence, you have the aliens, quote unquote aliens, whatever that might be. That's a loose term, air quotes there. Demons. Demons is what you're saying. 100%. So, you know, I need people, like I said, we did a lot there. I might have rambled. Please forgive me. It's a lot of information. I gave you cliff notes. All I'm asking people to do is just go study some of the stuff I talked about. Go read about the people I mentioned. But if they're demons, why are they doing things that could be good? Because like, like if war, you look at the nukes, look at the nukes, look at those things shutting down nukes. 
and and there's been I mean there's been a few cases where people have been injured or killed by getting in the way of these flying saucers or whatever they are that's what Gary Nolan's studying um but by and large it seems like these things are completely non-hostile and they're doing things to make us look in the mirror and not wipe ourselves off the face of the earth it depends how you're looking at it again sometimes you do things that are good to get people in too right so remember from the perspective that i take not all of them are bad right that realm was created before us they have free will even here in the Britannica, when we look at the definition of a jinn, in Arabic mythology, a spirit inhabiting the earth but unseen by humans, capable of assuming various forms and exercising extraordinary powers. Belief in jinn was common in pre-Islamic Arabia, where they were thought to inspire poets and soothsayers. Their existence was confirmed in the Quran, and they are conceptualized in Islam as creatures parallel to human beings who are capable of choosing between good and evil and must thus face eventual salvation or damnation. So they have that same test as humanity because they have free will. Anyone that was given free will by the creator is being tested by that creator. They are beings of a smokeless flame by nature in the same manner in which humans are said to be made of the earth and they cannot be seen by human beings. And if you look at human beings' skin colors, right? Adam had all of that, the different types of the earth in his, when he was created. So some of our skin colors look like, you know, like the sand color. Some of us like mm -hmm. have red, like the red clay of the earth. You know, some of us that are darker as human beings, we have like that rich color of the, of the, of the, of the, like, you know, like topsoil, you know? You can really see that, like the different colors of the earth and human beings skin color, mm -hmm. you know, if you look at it. I know that sounds crazy too, but so bottom line is these beings were created before us. They have a longer lifespan than us. They follow us from the minute we're created. Okay, the ones that are aligned with the devil, their only purpose is to lead us astray, to turn our back on the one that created us. The people that have this ancient wisdom, this black magic, this ability to work with that dimension is 100% real. I've named some of the people that did it, and you tell me how they invented rocketry and all this other crazy shit. When they're telling you themselves, we were involved together as a group, we followed this man, his books, the way, and all this stuff. They're painting pictures of what you, they want you to think is an alien, but they don't even accept as an alien. They accept them as gods. Deities is what they call them. They didn't call them aliens. <clears throat> We've been conditioned to believe over the last 60 years, 70 years, that there's other life that's more intelligent than us, and they are in some ways because they have existed before us. The demonic realm has been around since before us, but they're not all evil. But the point is, the ones that are not evil are actually supposed to stay away from humanity. They don't interfere in our dimension. Mm. The devil wants to destroy us. So the people that seek this power, this knowledge that they don't have, that they are enlightened, they are the enlightened ones, right? Is because they work <coughs> with that dimension. <coughs> have you heard of um, Have you heard of James Fox, documentary filmmaker, makes movies about? Aliens and UFOs, his first, well, not his first, but one of his most recent ones was uh, The Phenomenon. And then he did one this past year he released called Moment of Contact. I didn't see that one yet. So the premise of it was basically there in this little town in Brazil called Virginia. Uh, there was this craft that crashed and there was a huge debris field. This was in like the 90s, the early 90s, 92, 93, 94 maybe. And there was these two beings that were seen running around this little town of Virginia, Brazil. And there was all these witnesses that were interviewed. Like these, there was two, these three school schoolgirls were walking home from school through this field. They saw this being and they described it to everybody. It was on the news. There was other people who described it. There was these two um, military guys and two police officers that saw the thing. They grabbed it. They brought it to a hospital. And when they got to the hospital, basically all the military showed up and they like cordoned off the hospital, shut everything down. There was an x-ray technician that was involved and he was there. He was x-raying the being. And James Fox went there and he interviewed all these people like 20 years later. He's been interviewing them for the past like 12 years, go going back and forth between here and Brazil. And all these people had this exact 
the exact same description of what this being looked like. And there's pictures. If you pull up um, moment of contact, Virginia, Brazil, you'll go to images and you'll see what the being looked like. Um, the other weird thing about it was that after it, they brought it into the hospital, every single person that he interviewed over the past 10 years, they all ex described this insanely pungent odor that smelled like sulfur. And the hospital even smelled like sulfur for weeks afterwards. And they explained the feet of this being. It was like this little, like, like shiny, uh, dark brown creature right there with red eyes, they explained. And they said it had cloven feet and it reeked of sulfur. Now, I had this lady, Diana Pasolka, on the podcast a couple months ago, and she's a, uh, she sp um, has a degree in religious studies. She teaches religion. She studies religion, like, her whole life. And she, what she says is that every biblical description of demons in every religious text all describes them as, as having cloven feet and smelling like sulfur. And this looks like a gray. This thing looks like a gray. Had cloven feet, as described by the witnesses, and reeked of sulfur. So the reason why people use sage and all that stuff is because these beings don't like those smells, the demonic realm. They don't like nice, pleasant smells. They like pungent smells. They like, are like basically our filth is what they, they enjoy those smells. I believe many of the homeless people you see in the streets, besides of the fact that they have problems with narcotics, if they're not even on narcotics... You know, this is why it's dangerous when you drink alcohol, spirits, when you take drugs, you are making yourself very easily able to be possessed by these beings. There's people who can't remember they did this, they did that. If you study serial killers, when you get into a certain level of filth and you're not pure and you're not, well, this is why, for example, Muslims wash before they pray. The ritual of hoodoo, as it's known, is to purify the outside so the inside can be cleansed. If you're not pure on the outside, you can't be pure on the inside. Uh, baptism, right? And they're made from a smokeless flame. Water defeats fire, mm -hmm. right? In that aspect. So when you're in an impure state, so a lot of times, why do you think they do, or like if you study the occult, they would do orgies and all these disgusting things because basically they're trying to spiritually degrade themselves to the point where these beings see their loyalty and then they do what they do with them. Bro. They give them knowledge that they don't have. Technology. The give them knowledge they don't have? Technology that they didn't have. I believe a lot of this stuff, there's no way human beings made this on their own, bro. Yeah, we were like the channel to make it happen. But the information, like like I said, go back to Jack Parsons, man. The guy said, I would have never made it to space. You know, the rockets would have never happened if it wasn't for this being giving me the knowledge. But what did they have to go to to get the knowledge? Some people leave sacrifice, kids, whatever it is, bro. They demand some type of loyalty, some type of ritual, and then once you've shown loyalty to that dimension, then you, like they said, sell your soul to the devil, man. Sell your soul to the devil to give you the keys to this dimension, bro, because they know this dimension, even though it's our dimension, better than we do, because they've been here since before we were here. They follow us. They have a longer lifespan. They can travel at the speed of light. They can inspire thought, telepathy. They can shapeshift some of them. There's different descriptions of the jinn also in the Islamic uh, interpretation of what's going on. There's ones that fly. There's like they have different species. Now, some of these other people with the Anunnaki and all, they give like aliens all these different names, Valorians, all that. My friend, you're talking about the demonic realm, period. So Islam is not arrogant to say where, no, there's not other species or what you would call aliens, but not the way you're being spoon-fed by the media, by movies, by, and today's our Independence Day. We will not go silently into the night. Remember that movie with Will Smith? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's not. That's what they want you to think. Mm -hmm. These beings are smarter than us, and they're going to... My friend, that dimension is real, and there's a phenomenon that I've experienced in my life that I started studying a lot because it almost costed me my life. There is a, a concept in the Abrahamic faiths, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, known as the evil eye. Many people have seen, and he could pull it up, type in the evil eye uh, on Google, you'll see the blue symbol, okay, which is really, has no power to help you. I got a news flash for all of you that are like putting this amulet up like it's going to save you or protect you. But the reason it's created is because of the real fear and the real threat that people have from what this phenomenon is known as. You want to know why all these celebrities are dead? You want to know why Robin Williams hung himself? You want to know why, brother? It's the evil eye. 
This phenomenon we learn from the prophet um, Joseph. In the Quran is mentioned the evil eye, Christianity. That symbol has nothing, cannot help you. I got a news flash for you. If you're using this symbol to try to protect you from the evil eye, you are committing idolatry. You are putting your faith and your hope into an object when God is the only one that has power. This thing has no power. It's a piece of plastic, man. It's a way to make money. If you want power, you want protection from the evil eye, I'm going to tell you how to do it. So when I lost my brother, a.k.a. my uncle, I suffered from what I thought was a depression. And But I know spiritually, because I've been spiritual my whole life, praying, worshiping God, fasting, that we were designed by our creator to be able to handle anything, no matter how horrific. And the greatest examples of this are the people that he guided, the prophets, what they went through. Noah of the Ark, to see the whole world get flooded, which, by the way, every civilization in the world, even the ancient ones, all have a story and a recollection of a great flood. Mm -hmm. Even the ones that are not Abrahamic, the multi-god uh, civilizations, all have a story of a great flood, bro. Right. Modern science has said, DNA-wise, we all came from one ancestor, so you can't rule out Adam and Eve, bro. Science is actually kind of supporting that if you do homework on DNA, that we all had one common ancestor. That's what science says, right? So there's a lot going on, man, and there's so much. Like Religion is not something you learn in one day. It's like, well, that's why I say you have no right to judge anybody. Like It's so deep. The philosophy is so deep. The history of it is so deep. And it's what drew me to Islam because Islam, for me personally, encompassed all of it. The Christian perspective, the Jewish perspective, that God sent messengers and prophets throughout the earth, throughout time. He didn't just choose one nation. He chose the Israelites for a very long period of time. But when they didn't accept Christ, then they lost. They, they lost that chain of, of narration. And then God went to the other side of Abraham, which was the Arab nation. So remember, the Arabs and the Israelites draw their lineage to Abraham. Abraham's one of the most important people, and that's why it's called the Abrahamic faiths. That's the common ancestor. Abraham had two sons. One became the Israelites, one became the nation of the Arabs. So the Islamic uh, uh, interpretation is there's always been only one God. He sent messengers and prophets throughout the earth. He sent them over and over and over. We kept fucking up. We kept changing the books. Mm -hmm. He finally sent down one last message, one last book. That's what they believe the Quran is, is the final testament. right? We have the gospel of Christ, but we don't have it in its original form. There was 25,000 testaments, man. The Council of Nicaea, they chose which books went into what we call the Bible today. The Bible is a Greek word. Jesus wasn't Greek, man. He spoke Aramaic. So what I'm telling people is like, Again, I'm not here to push one or the other, even though it sounds like that right now. What I'm saying is like, we know so little and then we want to hate each other. Like at the end of the day, as a Muslim, not allowed to hate Christians, not allowed to hate anybody, not allowed to kill anyone. This is what the doctrine teaches. What people do on their own, that's their opinion. Same thing with Christians. Jesus said, love your enemy, let alone people that believe in him too. Like there's so much more in common and we're going to allow these little things to make mm -hmm. us kill each other and listen to people say, oh, Muslims, your enemy, your Christians, your enemy. Mm -hmm. No, we need to talk and bring, find the common ground. We both love Christ. Love the Virgin Mary. You know, some of my favorite stories in the Quran are about like Jesus. His first miracle in Islam is very different than from the Christian perspective, which I found fascinating. The Quran goes into how Jesus' first miracle was to protect the honor of his mother, to actually save her. So in Islam, it says that when, when Mary was having Christ, peace be upon him and her, she went into the wilderness to give birth. She was under lock and key the entire time because her life was in danger. She was not married. She did not have a husband, so for them to have seen her pregnant, they would have killed her for adultery. They would have stoned her to death. So when she went out to the wilderness to give birth to Christ, may he be blessed, God commanded Mary, when you go back to the city, Bethlehem or wherever it was, do not speak to anyone. If they talk to you and they attack you, point to the baby. Now, this is one of the stories in the Holy Quran, and it makes a lot of sense. She wasn't married. She was under protection. She went to have... Jesus, when she had the baby, she comes back to, to the town now and everyone starts coming out of the woodworks. Oh, Mary, how could you have done such a thing? How could you have a baby? You're not married. Calling her the most disgusting names that you would call a woman. And the mob's building up. And the Quran says she pointed to Jesus. And he's not even a couple of days old. His first miracle was he spoke, even in the arms of his mother as an infant. Do not attack my mother, for I am blessed in this life and the next. He told them, I am the Messiah. So when they see this one day, two day, three day, however many days, not even more than a week old, 
you just had a baby. Could you imagine the baby talking after five no, days? No, hell no. So the Quran says that the first miracle of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was to protect the honor and the dignity of the Virgin Mary. May she be blessed. You think, that's true? you think that's real? That the baby freaking said that two days old? I believe in the miracles of Jesus Christ. I believe he walked on water. I believe he created a pigeon out of clay and blew and it came to life. I believe he cured the lepers and the blind, but by God's power. He was just another one in the chain. He was created the same way John the Baptist was. Christianity says that John the Baptist, to my understanding in Islam also, that his parents didn't have physical relations. Zachariah was old and his wife was barren. They were mm -hmm. past the age of bearing children. The angel Gabriel appeared, said, you're gonna have a son. Your, your prayer has been answered, meaning John, John the Baptist. They never had physical contact. She was just pregnant instantly with John the Baptist. So Jesus wasn't the first one to be created without physical contact. Adam was created with no, with no parents, right? When you look at it from that perspective, I mean, if anyone has a right to say on that level that they're a son of God, he was directly carved with God's hands and the soul was blown into directly by God. Mm. But what if Adam was just an alien who came down? And what if Mary was like inseminated this by aliens? This is what they're trying to say. And then bro. Jesus was just like an alien. We came down. Adam and Eve came down already fully formed. They fell from right. Eden. They had their children at right. that if time. That, if that happened today, we would say that was aliens. You know, someone made a joke the other day. It's kind of funny. It's like when we go into the ocean, they're like, oh, shit, the aliens are like, when we go down with like scuba gear. But we seem to like lose that battle in the ocean, bro. But like the, the idea of angels, like back in the day, right? In biblical times is that a lot of people believe, smart people believe that I've talked to that study this stuff, believe that those were aliens and they were depicting them as being angels and demons because that's what they believed in. And when you're telling a story in the Bible, they maybe they didn't think of them as like extraterrestrials maybe they thought of them as gods because they had these special these crazy powers so when you tell me that this lady came out of the forest with this thing that looked like that was a baby that could speak and communicate with people and walk on water if you told me that there was some little creature right now that could do that i would think okay this is some sort of divine being i wouldn't think of it as something that was like the son of god I mean, Abraham was described as being thrown into a fire and walking out like they, because he was against idolatry. Mm -hmm. That's the common theme between all the prophets. And that's the 10 commandments. Thou shalt not have any other Lord, but me. Thou shalt not make any carven image or statue. And so many of these denominations make pictures, make images. It's in the 10 commandments. That's before Jesus and Muhammad. And they preach the same thing that we shouldn't be worshiping anything but God. Mark chapter 10, someone drops on his knees, I believe it's verse 17 of mm -hmm. the Bible and says, oh, good master, how do I seek eternal life? And Jesus says, good. Why do you call me good? Only God is good. That's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. They all said the same thing. Worship the one God. Worship the God of Abraham. Worship the God of Adam and Eve. Worship the God of Noah of the ark. They're all one chain working for the boss. There was prophets and messengers. Prophets brought the new messages that God revealed. Messengers were there to remind people of the, of the, of the last prophet's mission. So you had prophets that brought the new commandments down from God, and then you had the messengers who reminded people of what the previous prophets said before them. Those are the two types that received revelation from the Creator. What do you think created the flood? <clears throat> I think it was not by accident i think god destroyed the world and reset it you know people talk about human beings have evolved no we've de-evolved if you believe in 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 the abrahamic face you're a christian you're a muslim you're a jew that we know that noah of the ark this is even in the quran lived for 950 years we know that the prophet muhammad peace be upon him also stated that adam was uh 20 cubits or whatever like basically like 20 feet tall bro okay really i believe this is how human beings were before the deluge before the great flood we had longer lifespans mm -hmm. we were bigger right and we know that there were species on this earth even before the demonic realm there's another species that we know very little about known as the bin in the arabic language we don't know nothing really about them we know that we know that there was multiple species and for some reason god always chose this planet to bring his creation on based on these fates. It was always this planet.
Mm-hmm. So are there aliens in the sense that people are seeing these phenomenon and experiencing these things and they go to a haunted house? We know from the Islamic perspective that jinn like to inhabit areas that are not inhabited by humans. So like they'll stay in that abandoned house. You understand? They stay in areas that are like where we would say, oh my God, there was a ghost. No, that was the jinn fucking with you. And they fuck with us in our dreams. Nightmares come from them. And I'm going to get into this. And so, the jinn are in the d- demonic, or demonic realm? The demonic realm. There's good ones and bad ones. The good ones, they leave us alone, bro. And they're even broken down by denominations. Some of them are Christian. Some of them are very similar to humans. But they're made of a different matter than we are. They have different powers than we have. What do you think about ghosts? Do you think when humans die, their ghosts can inhabit? I, I'm not an expert on that subject matter. Some of the scholars have said sometimes souls do get trapped, you know? But the majority of people are in their grave. When you go to visit your family, they're in there, man, and they see you. No one is in heaven or hell until the world ends. But do you think there's like houses that are that are inhabited by people who have died a long time ago and their ghosts and their say spirits more, are still there? That I, can I would say that I, I think it's possible, but I would I would say it's the jinn in the majority of cases. So they're they not can, past humans. They can possess objects. They can possess statues. They can possess people. Like if you see a statue crying, that's most likely a jinn in that statue creating that phenomenon so people will be uh worshiping the statue which is a form of idolatry and tricking humanity into like oh my god look the statue's crying so i need to worship this statue it's idolatry idolatry is forbidden in the abrahamic faiths period for those of you that think you're experts in faith and religion go back to the basics the 10 commandments god said if you can't remember anything remember these 10 rules and you're good i am one don't make pictures. Don't make statues. This isn't the Ten Commandments. Don't make pictures and don't make statues. Yeah, thou shalt not make. Pull up the Ten Commandments, brother. Pull it up on Google. Let's refresh everyone's memory. This is what Moses brought. I love Moses. My son's name is, I won't say what family member of his, but like I named my children based on these names. My children have biblical names in that expression, but they're also names that are in the Quran and the Torah because I respect these individuals and what they did for humanity. Look at the Ten Commandments, man. We forgot the Ten Commandments, you know? And there's sects in, of, of Islam that do the same thing. This is forbidden. It says, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make idols, meaning images or carved things that we put our faith into, like that amulet I showed you, the one mm. eye. Anything that you focus your belief towards other than the creator is a form of idolatry, whether it's a picture, a But statue. it can be an idol of Jesus. It's considered a form, based on this, again, this is before Christianity and Islam. Why would God tell us not to make images, not carve anything, and then we're doing it right after? It doesn't make any sense, Danny. It's not to pick on people. Remember, there's sects of every religion that have deviated. The question is, why are you doing what you're doing? Have you even studied? Have you researched? We're going back to what I said in the beginning of this conversation. How much do you know about your faith? Every religion believes in the Ten Commandments. How many of us are really following the Ten Commandments? If we're praying to images and statues, then... I guess the Ten Commandments were wrong. Like, I don't know. I mean, I'm asking you now. What do you think, Danny? I just think people are trying to go about their daily lives and try to, trying to survive. And people are just, they're going to work and trying to put dinner on the table and, and raise their kids. about what comes next, Danny. Right. That's what we started this whole Well, we don't, they don't have, they don't have the, the means to really think about that. I mean, the do people. We, Danny, Danny, all day we're on fucking, not me and you, but let's be real. I know the score of the Jets game. Rodgers broke his knee. You put all your energy into all this shit yeah. that really doesn't matter in the scheme of life for most of us. Mm-hmm. Okay? And you're going to sit there. I don't think when you face God that day, if you believe that you're going to face him, you're going to have an excuse to say, well, I didn't know, God. You knew how to use Google Look, to pull up, uh, you know what, and beat your meat. Well, and you had all this time, but you couldn't use this because yeah. everything has duality, right? Mm-hmm. I can use this for good or for bad. Mm-hmm. I can use this to enlighten my mind. Uh, I read about all kinds of interesting things, man. But you, like me and you, are we have the ability and the time to do that because we literally, we spend our days talking to people like this. So we we are fortunate enough to be able to spend time studying this stuff and spending a lot of time looking into it because we get to come on here and we talk about it and get paid doing it most people don't do that they don't have that ability they for have the record to- i have not been paid yet my uh, danny I just want to say for the record i have done everything out of passion i wouldn't mind getting some money from this that's very not, noble not from this but like you know like to make a living in that aspect i don't make a living from podcasting yet but your podcast when is I incredible. went towards studying spirituality okay my own family was against me my own family was like what are you doing why are you studying this you're, you know they were like literally against me my own parents at a very young age I started studying religion on my own 
like I said, I came from a secular family. They didn't really have much structure. I never went to a mosque. They didn't know how to pray. I knew nothing about religion. And when I started studying, I really started studying in seventh grade is when I went deep into it. And I had changed so much at that point that my family, I guess, I raised some flags. And like, I had become like really serious, you know, very like dedicated. I was praying, I was fasting, you know, they didn't want to see me staying hungry as a kid in school. You know, doing Ramadan is not easy, bro, especially in the summer months. So they see me like I'm about to go play basketball, varsity basketball, having eaten or drink. You know, Hakeem Olajuwon was famous for that in the NBA. He was, now they're telling everyone you should fast. It's so good for you, it kills cancer. So like, I feel like all this knowledge is there, man. Human beings made it. There, there would only be one religion if we just listened. We kept changing the books and I don't like this rule and that rule and interjecting all this stuff is why we have all these different religions. We went astray is what happened. We went astray. There is a phenomenon that people need to know about. I believe in this thing because I've experienced it myself and I'm gonna tell two stories very really quickly because I hope it saves a life. I lost a family member of mine, was very close to me. I went through two, three years of real sadness and, and, and I did draw on spirituality to get out of it. I didn't get a therapist and people would make jokes like maybe you should have had a therapist, but I really just prayed a lot. God helped me. I, I know that God designed us to get through anything. You know, once we understand that power and that life is a trial and a tribulation and that all of us will be tested, whether it's a loss of life, all of us are going to lose somebody we love. Or maybe the people we love are going to destroy us. You know, there's kids that have like the most evil parents. Like this whole tribulation, people go, well, if there's a God, then why is there wars and all this? Because he gave us a gift, man. Look, it's free will, brother. For him to interject and... If we all saw God, if they, right? Like for those that don't believe, if we saw God, the rest of us would stay the rest of our lives praying because if we saw him, and it's not because he's a man and I say he is, there's no words to even describe God, the concept of this creator, that we would be, try to be as perfect as we could because if we could see God, then we would know Then there's definitely a hell, there's definitely a heaven, so I need to be, you wouldn't act to your true desire, your true nature. The whole key of this life is to get the knowledge and to suppress those desires to elevate, or as the Buddhists would say, to reach nirvana, to elevate as a human being, to elevate your soul, to be in a state of submission to the creator, which basically these books are like when a car manufacturer makes a book, all of the books will make you a better human being. That's a fact. And I believe every single religion had divine influence, but people went astray or added to the story or changed the concept of what the God God was and made it into multiple. So I believe it all came from the same source. Humanity drifted away. Humanity uh, kept changing these things and that's why mm -hmm. God kept sending more and more prophets down until he sent the last one down based on what I believe. Now, the evil eye. I was going through what I thought was a depression because I lost a family member, but I understood after two, three years, I'm like, listen, I know the person's never coming back. Life is hard. God designed us. We're all going to die. Like, that's a reality of life. It's not normal for me to still be in this state. I was suffering at one point in my life from the worst anxiety ever. It felt like I literally had a ton of bricks on my chest that would never come off, bro. Okay? I went from being extremely extroverted, as I am in my state like this, like, talk to everyone. When you go on my Instagram, you'll see me with every celebrity in the world. They'll probably watch this episode and hit fucking unfollow. King of the nightlife. Yeah. They're probably going to watch this episode and be like, okay, we got to unfollow this guy. I can't be seen in public with this guy anymore. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> so, like, I, you know, I'm connected to so many powerful people. I'm one away from people you can't even imagine. Some of the names I don't even want to mention. I know what's coming for humanity. Trust me when I tell you. Okay? And what happened to me was I had this anxiety that would not go away. It was really bad. I had a fear not to even leave my home. I just wanted to stay in my house. I became a hermit, bro, which is like so not like me. I was literally staying in my man cave and playing Xbox so I wouldn't lose my mind because I thought I was suffering from a depression from the loss of a loved one. I had lost my sexual appetite. I had uh, a cloudiness. I could not talk like this, bro. I went from someone that was able to speak in front of large crowds, no fear, give a speech in front of a stadium, no problem, to I just could not articulate the way I articulate now. Very foggy-minded. I would cry for no reason. Like just always in a state of complete sorrow. Very dark, bro. Um, I um, 
would fight with those closest to me for no reason, like argue with my mom, my dad, for no reason whatsoever. They didn't even do anything wrong. And it was like a rage that I could not control. And they would leave, and I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Like, why did I act like this, right? And just a real fear of to even go outside and deal with anyone. And a constant state of paranoia, fear, depression, all that stuff. After a couple of years of like living like this, literally living in sorrow, bro, such a sorrow, I understood for the first time why people committed suicide. I didn't have those thoughts, but I understood why, because this feeling is such a hopeless feeling. I believe this phenomenon is what they call the evil eye. I believe many of these public people that die are dying from this. The Prophet Muhammad was quoted as stating, half the people in the grave are there from the evil eye. That's one of his quotes from the Hadith, the traditions of what he said, not the Quran, the Hadith. It exists in all three religions. Now, I go to every doctor on earth, okay? And I will never speak against uh, mental therapy, like psychologists, because I do mm -hmm. believe that it has its place and there's people that need help and that stuff does work. This is for those people that have tried all of that and nothing's working. I hope you're listening. I hope you're paying attention. I go first to physical doctor. Let me check everything. Let me check my blood. Let me like let me see. Maybe I'm missing a hormone. Like okay. I gotta be able to get back up. You know, like this doesn't make sense. I was smart enough to know I'm like, this doesn't make sense for me to still be in this state. And I do worship God and I do pray to God. And I try to be optimistic. And I understand that life is a trial and tribulation. That the world is not designed for us to all be happy, bro. It's not. Because then it wouldn't be a test. So I go to all these doctors, make the story short, they check everything, my minerals, my vitamin, everything is normal. Then the one doctor says you should go see a endocrinologist or whatever, the one that checks your balls, right? Your male anatomy. Yeah, yeah. I go to this doctor's office, bro, and I'm, the, young, levels. I'm the youngest guy in there, man. I'm like embarrassed I'm even walking into this. How old were you? This is like maybe 34, 34 years old. It's gonna be 10 years since, since I lost a loved one in October. I go into this office, but everyone's like 70, 80. <laughs> I'm young, you know, they're going, and I'm like, man, this is like embarrassing. I'm embarrassed. I go, the doctor was kind of hot, I'm not gonna lie. She was like this beautiful doctor with a mini skirt with it. And she's like, this is like, she's a specialist, right? And like, we have to sit there and talk about my private part, bro. Yeah. Do you have this? Do you have that? I'm like, no. She's like, does it work? I'm like, yeah. I said, but I just don't really have a desire to really do anything, you know? She's like, no libido. Yeah. She's like, I'm gonna check your testosterone level. She checked everything. She's like, everything's fine. I'm like, this can't be like this. Where is this coming from then? Because the whole time I'm like, this can't be in my mind, right? She's like, at this at this point, sir, I'm going to recommend you go see a psychiatrist. That was like devastating for me to hear this, right? I'm like, nah, no, nah, I know I'm not crazy. If this is all in my mind, that I'm gonna I'm gonna beat this thing. If maybe this is what a real depression is like, right? Again, bricks on the chest, anxiety through the roof, bro, overwhelming anxiety a fear of going outside, cloudiness of the mind, loss of sexual desire, fighting with those closest to me for no reason. Nothing's getting better. I'm praying, I'm trying everything, nothing's working. I go to visit my childhood friend. She's like my spiritual mother, genius woman. She had a very high position in the Department of Buildings in New York. I will not mention her name. I've known her since I was a child. She's of Egyptian descent. This woman is an amazing woman. She's a genius. She's such a beautiful human being that just when I think of her, sometimes I break down. She's, she's done so much for me in my life. I go to see her, not for my problem, Danny. I go to see her because she had lost her brother and it was the holiday. So I go to pay respects to her. I didn't go her, there to tell her my problems. So I go see her and I'm like, you know, Miss So-and-so, you know, I'm so sorry you lost your brother and blah, blah, blah. And then she gets to asking me like, how are you doing? And when she asked me how I was doing, I couldn't, I couldn't hold it in, bro. I just start sobbing. I start crying. And I'm like, Miss, you know, so-and-so, if I didn't believe in God and I didn't have children, I don't want to live no more. That's the way I felt. I just don't want to feel like this no more. Like, I'm sobbing. She's like, very calmly, what's wrong? You know, what's wrong? What are you feeling? I'm like, you know, this is what I'm feeling. I gave her all the symptoms I gave you, right? Everything you, I told you that I was feeling, I, I explained it to her. She goes, I know what's wrong with you. I go, you know what's wrong with me? I said, I just went to every doctor in the world. They're all telling me that I should go see a psychiatrist. I'm probably losing my mind. She goes, no, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and then we'll see if that's what you have. I'm like, listen, you're one of the smartest people I know. 
I mean, she literally wrote like the entire construction code for the city. Like she's a genius. And I've known her my whole life. And it's like one of the sweetest, like when you just see her, she has something that's known as like the light, like the light of God on her. Like just, you meet these people. I've seen Christians like that. I've seen Jews like that. I've seen Muslims like that. People that are like connected to source. They're, they're vibrating high, as they say. Just so calm and so peaceful, bro. Like I, I, I yearn to be like them. I've only been like that a few times in my life where I've reached what I felt like a, a level of nirvana or an understanding of, you know, but I was doing what I'm supposed to do, mm. right? Not following my desires. Mm. She goes to me, are you public? <clears throat> she doesn't know about my public, like my, my public life. She only knows me as her son's friend. She doesn't follow Instagram or anything. Right. She goes, are you public? I go, yes, I am public. Do you post on social media? Do you post your life, what you're eating, where you're traveling? I go, yes. She goes, do you ever think about the people that don't have what you have? I'm like, sometimes I say, actually not sometimes, I say a lot of times I feel bad. She's like, when you're posting, you're attracting the eye. She's like, you have the evil eye on you <clears throat> and you have all the symptoms of it. I go, so wait, Miss Simon. I said, but how can the evil eye be on me? I pray, I say, I worship God. I perform ablution, you know, I baptize, I pray, I worship God. Am I not protected? She goes, anyone can be hit by the evil eye. Even the prophet was put under black magic and he had to get out of it, right? And the religion, he, a spell was cast on him. So these things exist in these fates and people don't talk about it. It's like swept under the rug, like, oh, this is crazy stuff to talk about. I'm so desperate. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do anything at this point, brother. The way I felt, I'm telling you, most people would have killed themselves. If I wasn't as strong-willed as I was, I probably wouldn't be here today. I finally understand why all these celebrities are dying, bro, and people that are influencers. And I meet women with millions of followers, bro, and they seem happy on their Instagram. Bro, they're suicidal in real life, bro. They talk about killing themselves every fucking day. She goes to me, this is real simple. You've been posting, people are seeing your posts. There's people out there that just don't like you, brother, or they want what you have. They don't do it to you on purpose, but it's a phenomenon of this world and this dimension, and this is what happens. She's like, all you gotta do is go home, take a gallon of water. You, you can pull this up on YouTube. It's a scientific fact, by the way. Take the gallon of water, mention God's name, blow into the water, Pray into the water. Charge the water. Basically, make holy water. Go home, take this water, drink some of it, and then pour the rest over your body and ask God to cleanse you and protect you from the demonic realm. I'm like, Miss Amara at this. Oh, sorry. Strike her name, please. Okay, okay. I'm like, Miss, at this point, I'm so desperate. I've tried everything else. This sorrow is destroying my life. I'll do it. I go home, I take the water, I say the prayers. Even as I'm making the water, I hear a voice. In my own mind, that sounds like it's my thought, but I know it's not me. Because they can do what? Telepathy. They can inspire thought. You think it's yours, it's not. They do inception in us, bro. And people listen to those thoughts. I don't know what took over me. I was. It's that, that rage that comes out of nowhere. You listen to these thoughts because they inspire thought into our mind. And he goes, how are you wasting your time with that? I said, yo, these motherfuckers are real demons. I charge the water. I say the prayers. I make intention. Intention is very important. Nia, as they call it. Mm -hmm. I charge the water in the name of God. I ask for his protection, his help, his cleansing from the demonic realm, from shaitan, Satan. I drink the water. I cleanse. I purify. All of a sudden, Danny, I swear to God, I shit you not, bro. The cloudiness in my mind, instantly gone. I'm sharp. The, the, the bricks on my chest, the anxiety that was gone. Sexual drive through the roof. Everything back instantly. I said, what the fuck just happened to me? How do I explain this to people without them thinking I've lost my mind? I went to every doctor in the world the same way Michael Jackson did, the same way Robin Williams did. They had the best therapist in the world, bro. But they couldn't save them because what they were suffering from wasn't physical or mental. Yes, there's mental illness. Yes, there's physical illness. But there's also spiritual disease. And if you're trying to cure your soul with a physical remedy, it will not work. So a lot of these people that are dying, when you're that famous, there's no way the eye doesn't go on you. This is why so many celebrities do drugs to numb the pain. They take psychotropic drugs that are not working because if they work, they would become normal again. They can't. It's a spiritual disease. They're under demonic attack, which is what the evil eye is to bring them to a point of such sorrow that they kill themselves because there's nothing more that that realm loves, that the evil ones of them, 
Remember, they're not all evil. Than a human being taking their own life. When a human being takes their own life, it's like telling the creator, this test is over. It's like if I gave you a math test for one hour, so you have an hour to complete geometry test. In the first five minutes, you could turn your paper over and say, I'm done. You fail. That's why suicide is you're basically telling the creator, I'm done with this mission you put me on. Mm -hmm. They're failing, unfortunately, from the sorrow of this world. The evil eye is real, brother. Now, people would say that's probably a placebo effect. There's more to the story. So now I'm normal all of a sudden. Everything goes back to, I just do a little ritual, bro. I pray to God, I, I, God directly, no one else, God. I cleanse and purify the water, I, uh, and it all goes away. And everyone's like, yo, you seem like your old self again. And I'm like, how do I explain this to people without them thinking I'm crazy? Now I'm like, I gotta study this. So I go in deep, start studying the evil eye. That's where the one quote came up, the prophet said, peace be upon him, half the people in this world die from the evil eye. I was like, that's a fucking lot on people, man. But we're so public now. These things are dangerous, man. It's creating such sorrow. Social media, and I'm guilty of it too, so forgive me. My followers, I know I post things like, but I, I do it to try to inspire people. Like, yo, you can do better. I was down and out. I've been through hell and back. Look, you can make your life amazing again. I don't do it to boast because I feel bad. But it seems like I'm boasting sometimes if I'm being real. All of this is going on. Like, holy cow, this is like, this is crazy. I go to visit one of my cousins. And I had gotten like, you know, like really distant from a lot of people in my family. And a lot of it was my fault at that time. But I was suffering, bro, in silence. I was so full of sorrow, bro. I was crying all the time, bro. There wasn't a day I didn't cry, bro, if I'm being real. And this is not easy to talk about publicly, but if it saves a life, then so be it. I go to visit my first cousin. She had just had her first baby. They live in a really rich area in uh, Jersey. I'm not going to mention her name. She, she's going to watch this. She's going to know exactly who she is. I don't go there again for the evil eye. I go there because she had a baby. I go there to say congrats, cousin. Like, you know, I love you. I'm glad you had a baby. You know, it's a big deal when another life comes into this world in your family. Mm -hmm. So I go to pay respects. She's married to like football player guys, bro. They're all like 6'6", six, six, like ripped. They're wealthy. They got a lot of money, whatever. One of, uh, if I'm not mistaken, her husband was signed to the Patriots practice team but decided not to like, you know, I was like, why didn't you? Take the job. He's like, they're only going to pay me 400 and probably abuse me. I said, dude, I would have took 250 They could have knocked me out. <laughs> but what I joke around about that. But So, like, you know, very wealthy, very good looking. The younger brother ends up being a QB for one of the big colleges. Won't mention who, okay? I'm going through all this with them, just about their baby. You know, like, congratulations. And I'm like, I'm like something came over. I'm like, I kind of got to tell you guys something. And I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm going to tell you. I may have acted a little irrational the last couple of years. I thought it was all because of we lost this family member, but I think something else was happening to me that had a hold over me. And I need to explain this to you because I'm scared if this ever happens to anyone else, they might not know how to get help. And what I did was I explained everything. I told him the whole story. I went to every doctor. I did this. I did that. I told him all my symptoms, the anxiety, the bricks on the chest, the fogginess of the mind, all the stuff that I had suffered for for years. And they don't look at me like I'm crazy. And then all of a sudden, her husband's like, can I see you in the kitchen for a second? And I'm like, yeah, what's up, man? He's like, uh, I need you to talk to, uh, I need you to talk to my brother, my little brother. I'm like, well, what's up? He's like, he's not doing good, bro. He's basically suicidal. He's been visiting a therapist. They have him on pills and nothing is working. Everything you just mentioned, how you felt, that's how he feels. I'm like, listen, bro, I'm not a priest or an imam, I don't even feel qual. I didn't know if I, like this would, like, how can I help them? You know what I mean? Like, I didn't think that this could help or that I would even have the power to do it. I'm not saying I'm some kind of cure and healer, so please don't flood my inbox, but I can tell people how to do what I did and it seems to have worked for a few people. So I go and I walk into this guy's bedroom. He's on, this is a 21 year old in his prime, everything in his life amazing, QB for a huge college, they got money, they live in a man, I mean, everything amazing in their life. He's on the ground in a fetal position in his room, crying hysterically. And I'm like, hey bro, and I won't say his first name. I'm like, yo, what, what's up, man? He's like, ah, like this, crying like this. This is his exact face looks best. I'm like, Beck, like, if, honestly, man, I don't wanna live no more, man. I'm like, damn, this guy's bad. Cause, you know, I wasn't that level, but I was close to what he was going through. I'm like, what do you feel, man? He's like, I feel fogginess in the mind, chest on the bricks, scared to leave the house, fighting with everyone close to me, like just complete chaos in his life. 
I said, I don't know if this is going to work, bro. Do you know how to even say these prayers? He goes, no. I said, maybe if I do it, it might work for you. I don't know. But I, I recommend you get help from someone that knows how to bless. I made the water for him. He took the water, bro. Everything went away. He no longer sees a therapist. He no longer taking. And again, I'm not knocking those. You should always get help and seek help. And I'm not telling people that are, you know, if you're experiencing any type of thoughts, please call a professional, call a therapist, like mm -hmm. call for help, call 911, call whoever you got to call if you're feeling like that. But if you're trying all this other stuff and it's not working, you may be suffering from a spiritual disease. Everything went away, bro, for this guy. That He was already on fucking pills. <clears throat> And he's already seen a threat and nothing's working. And he knows it's real. He's watching this. I said, yo, this is crazy. And I believe that was God showing me that you think it was placebo effect. And then guess what happened? I'll mention another an actress. She took ayahuasca. Same thing. She made the water, bro, the next day. Some girl from Mexico contacted me two months ago. She's having fucking nightmares. People see this. They call it sleep paralysis. It's not sleep paralysis. Does sleep paralysis exist? Yes. But when you see a shadowy figure in your dreams, people have explained the same phenomenon. We all seem to see the same phenomenon. Mm -hmm. That when we're half asleep or half awake or what they call sleep paralysis, there's a shadowy figure. We can't see the figure directly and they kind of have like this control on us, but we can't move because I believe when we're sleeping, we're in that dimension or other dimensions. Mm. That the soul leaves the body during sleep. They say sleep is the cousin of death. It's why when someone's in such a deep sleep, like a REM, because I've seen dreams that have come true in my life. Many of you experience it. I've seen dreams where someone dies in less than a couple of days. They die later, bro. How did that happen? What are the odds of that? This is my proof to myself is all I need. I don't care what people think. Evidence that we have a soul in us, bro, that is eternal, that there's a creator who sometimes even shows us the future, man, because dreaming is one of the parts of being uh, uh, the powers that, that human beings have that sometimes but there's three types of dreams and we'll get to that in a second getting back to the point if you've experienced dreams where you have shadowy figure and you're haunted with nightmares I would recommend doing this cleanse if you're drinking alcohol and you're taking drugs you are possessable by these beings that I've been talking about this whole episode they come into human beings that are dirty filthy their blood is full of alcohol it corrupts the soul it makes you possessable it makes it easier for them to fuck with you when you're sleeping or when you're awake to whisper thoughts into your mind to create paranoia and anxiety in the human being and the only way to cure that if it's not mental or physical is spiritual worshiping the creator directly cleansing with water baptizing or performing hoodoo as the muslims call it which is a form of baptism where they purify before every prayer you've seen it in the movies mm -hmm. that's why they do that covering women is not just a form of oppressing them it's to protect them from the evil eye that's why the Virgin Mary, peace be upon her, is covered, just like the Muslim women cover. It's not just to suppress women and make men, um, you know, uh, not be attracted to them. There's actually the spiritual component, which so many people neglect to talk about. The covering is because when men see these women, they cast an eye upon them, that their beauty, they, you ever heard the expression, beauty is a curse? Mm -hmm. That's what it means, bro. That... The transference of the eye occurs because these women are so beautiful. They're so attractive. Every man that sees them without even, not, it's not like they're doing it on purpose. They cast the eye upon these women. I'm in front of a nightclub in New York a couple months ago. This girl had like 10 million followers. All about pictures, putting her ass out, bikini, this and that. Mm -hmm. I see her in front of the club. She's crying hysterically. I didn't know she had this many followers until I spoke to her. So I go see her. And she's crying hysterically. I just wanted to make sure she was okay and safe. You know, as a alpha male, if there's any left in our fucking country, if you see a woman crying, make sure she's safe, man. Make sure she's okay. Because you never know what's going on out there in the streets. And that should be even for a man. There's nothing wrong with that. You see another human being suffering, make sure they're safe at first. I mean, we all have, I mean, yesterday I saw two people get dumped. Uh, the day before I was on the Hudson River, just uh -huh. hanging out. At nine o'clock in the morning, I witnessed two different guys walk their girls down to the water and dump them on the spot. And they're both crying. And I felt so bad. If I get out of the car and be like, it's going to be okay. Like, you guys are going to be okay. Like, fuck those guys. Who knows if it was even the guy's fault. But well, I'm just saying, like, I, so if you see someone hurting, man, it doesn't hurt two seconds to say, hey, are you okay? This is to everyone that's been suffering from anxieties. What may be a spiritual disease. You've tried therapy. You've tried everything else and nothing is working. I've had over 50 people that have tried to do what I'm telling you and it has worked, bro. 
They no longer suffer from the anxiety. They're no longer having nightmares. They feel a calmness come to them. Pull up on there. Charged uh, Quran and Bible water on YouTube. Here's proof scientifically, bro, that this scientist from Japan mm -hmm. would freeze water. On YouTube? Yeah, bro. He would freeze the water and the form of the crystals, like you know how they say like no snowflakes the same? Yeah. You know, okay. <clears throat> there you go. Water, that right, the second one. Water reacts to the Quran. Watch this. And it's, it's everything it's you wish Bible. for. Your site traffic is skyrocketing. Also for the Bible. Commercial. Scientifically proven, bro. Japanese scientist Masaru Emoto discovers the secrets of Zamzam water. Zamzam's a fountain in Saudi Arabia. Science has now revealed new secrets that about Zamzam Muslims water. believe that Abraham was given as a gift. The Quran. It has now been scientifically proven that water is affected by what is recited over it. Japanese scientist Masaru Emoto first began experimenting on water after he had read that each snowflake falling from the sky is unique. He wanted to disprove this theory as his scientific instincts told him that this could not be true. The geometric shape of the snowflake is determined by its chemical composition. The composition of water is well known, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So how can snowflakes that fall from the sky be different from one another? He said, I was determined to prove that this theory was false. So he built a laboratory consisting of a deep freezer with a regulator because no liquid subjected to a sudden freezing can assume a geometric shape. The freezing must be slow so the atoms have the chance to crystallize into the shape decreed by God. He set up a deep freezer with a regulator, a cold room at a temperature of minus 7 degrees Celsius, and several microscopes equipped with the cameras so he could photograph a snowflake before it melted. He said, I took samples from two faucets in the laboratory. I froze them and each sample gave me a different snowflake. The samples came from two different wells, two different rivers, from two different lakes. A Muslim later introduced Dr. Emoto to Zemzem water so he could experiment on it. Emoto took a sample of Zemzem water and said, I couldn't crystallize it, even by diluting the Zemzem water with distilled water. He finally managed to crystallize the Zemzem water after diluting it by 1000, one drop of Zemzem mixed with 1000 drops of distilled water. And he got a uniquely shaped crystal. Two crystals were formed, one on top of the other. Mr. Emoto's colleague said that the two crystals could be due to the fact that Zemzem water is composed of two words, Zem and Zem. Allah knows best. This is not the Emoto this is not the exact video, by the way. You can you can cut it. Verses over the. So, there's other videos that explain whether it's the you know the gospel mm -hmm. or even the Quran. When people recite prayers into the water, it changes the crystallization when it freezes. So the water actually does become charged and it can physically manifest. You can actually see it under a microscope. That's the video I was trying to find. Wow. This is closely related to that, but right. this is not the exact video. That it literally changed the, like the, like they would do one water, they would freeze it without it, without it being like recited upon. Uh -huh. And then they would take another gallon of water, the same water, you know, same source of water. When they would sing the prayers into the water, it would change the composition of the flakes. Whoa. So what I'm trying to say is that I would charge this water, make holy water is what we would call it. By praying into it. By praying into it. And we use this water to cleanse us. And all these people I know, man, they, and they know, they're watching. Some of them are my followers. I'm not something, this is not a business. I didn't take money for it. It's just knowledge that I shared with them. But I'm telling you, it saved my life, man. It saved their lives. Wow. That these were people that were under the, now I know, I'm like, like when, when Robin Williams passed away, bro, I was so sad. I loved him, man. I thought he was an amazing actor. I am telling you, if you are someone that is public and you are not praying and you are not in a condition where you can be protected, because even if you pray, it can happen to you. When you are public, you're public. If you ever experience what I'm telling you guys and you've tried therapy and you tried everything else and it doesn't go away, you have a spiritual problem. And the only way to purify that is to call upon source. You could take every pill in the world, see every shrink in the world, they will not heal. That's why these people end up offing themselves, bro. Because years and years and years of living like that, why do you think he needed to take medicine just to go to sleep, bro? Why was he taking basically anesthesia to, to go to sleep is the kind of sorrow this guy had. 
the kind of anxiety that he had. So if you're someone that's out there that's suffering from these things, first question I would ask you is, are you public? Do you post? Are you very beautiful as a woman, even if you don't have a lot of followers, because you don't need to be on social media for the evil lie to hit you. It can hit you anywhere. And this is in the Quran, the Torah, the Bible, all three faiths speak of it. That amulet is not gonna protect you. I got a news flash for you. If you're wearing that blue thing with the eye, you are putting faith into a piece of plastic, a piece of wood, when you should put your faith into one that created the heavens and the earth, the one that no human can see in the flesh without the syndicate, the most powerful being beyond our comprehension, the one that created the heavens and the earth and all that's in between, the one that created the species that people are calling aliens today and everything that lives, but we don't understand because that's why it's foreign to us. And these phenomenon happen and unless you're versed on this or you study this or you investigate this, and there's people that take advantage of this shit, the soothsayers, magicians, some of those magicians, bro, that are actually doing some of those crazy things you see are working with that dimension, bro. When you're looking at some of this magic that they do and you're sitting there going, how the fuck in the millisecond there is nothing under the floor with a guy cut? Like, how did the hell did they do this? And an instant of an eye, some of them are working with that dimension, bro. 100%, bro. That fortune teller that knows facts about your life that no one could have known and they didn't Google you. How could they be so accurate? They're working with that dimension. I believe, and again, I could be wrong, and may God forgive me if I am, my theory is the demonic realm will come into this realm, the bottomless pit, as is explained in Christianity. We're going to see phenomenon. Humanity will be under attack by an alien force, but it's not aliens. It's a demonic force to convince you that you were not created by God, but you were created by aliens. And that's the agenda. I believe hmm. one of the agendas that will manifest towards the end of time. I believe there's only one God, the God of Adam, Abraham, Noah, Moses, Jesus, Jacob, and the prophet Muhammad. For me personally, all I tell people is do your homework, study some of the things I spoke about today. I, I'm, the evil eye thing, 100%, I'm not making any of that up. Do your homework on it. You don't need to go to all these weird people to take it off of you, killing chickens and all that weird shit. Because <clears throat> sometimes when people want to get the evil eye off of them, they'll go and do these rituals that are satanic mm. and are pagan and are whatever. And then those species will be like, good, we'll stop bothering them because right. we led them astray. They're worshiping things and praying to things they shouldn't have prayed to. Right. Their whole game is to take us away from source, take us away from God. Make him look foolish for creating us. That's how much they hate us, <laughs> the bad ones of them. Right. So when people take ayahuasca, I'm telling you right now, you're fucking with the demonic realm. You better be careful, bro. And when you're doing all these weird things to take this shit off of you, all you're succumbing to is associating with God that which has no right to be associated. You are playing into worshiping amulets and the evil eye symbol that everyone uses and praying to statues and things when God told us on the Ten Commandments, and I don't care if you're a Muslim, Jew, or a Christian, you should worship God and God alone. You should not pray to statues or figures or anything except source, which is God. And a lot of the problems we have in the world is because we have gone astray. We follow our own desires. We're telling the one that made us, we're smarter than you. We're going to do it our way. And look at where the fuck we are now, bro. With that said, I think this is a good place to stop on this episode. <laughs> and I think your guests are probably like, hey, this guy's fucking out of his mind. We could probably go on another 10 hours about all the other shit. But any questions for me? You're dropping bombs, man. You think I'm out of my fucking mind. He's like, this is a... He's gonna contact us. You might be a little bit out of your mind, but I think it's—I don't think it's a bad thing. He's gonna be like, "This is the last time we're having Beck Lover." <laughs> Hell no, man, dude! I love every time you come on here. You're—you're you're always dropping crazy knowledge that I never knew. I never. You think the evil eye is real? Um, I don't know. Would you consider yourself a Christian? Um, you brought up. I'm not that? super religious. Or more traditionalist, like just celebrate the holidays, get the tree, get the gifts. Yeah, I don't know. Did you ever delve into any of this I've stuff? I've never delved really deep into religion. You know, I've read I've read a lot about it. I've listened to a lot of stuff about it. I've talked to a lot of people who have studied a lot of religion, but I've never really considered myself super religious. I think that, you know, it's something that pe happens to people when they get older, when they get closer to death. They start to really accept religion into their lives and accept some of these ideas. Um, 
Because you know, I'm they, not close because to they're it. getting closer to a point that they can't right. deny anymore. Right. Shit, I'm about mm-hmm. to die. Right. Now all of a sudden you're worried. So like one of the interesting things in Islam, for example, is that it says that like once you're on your deathbed, you can't repent, mm. which is different from Christianity. Because Christianity, right. as long as you say, you know, so these are like some of the differences, but that doesn't mean that a Christian and a Muslim should, should fucking hate each other. Like I don't right. understand. Right. Right. Like neither doctrine allows for that. It always has to come from a place of compassion. Like, mm. if you truly believe what you believe is the truth, you should feel bad for those people. I definitely think you're onto something, though, with the spiritual sickness. I think there definitely is something to that. Well, that's why they do what they do. They have to bring. And this is where like a lot of these things overlap. Remember, I said like the mosaic. Mm-hmm. So many people have like a couple of the tiles. Some people have half the tiles, which is a lot. Most people don't even have one tile in the mosaic to understand the world that we live in right, right now. Right. They don't know of these characters that influenced our lives beyond measure. Mm-hmm. People like Aleister Crowley, people like Walt Disney, people like Ron Hubbard, people like Jack Parsons, the origins of Hollywood, how everything came, the rituals they did. This shit is still going on. Go put on the rap videos. Go look at, um, what's her face, the pop star? Um, Katy Perry, who was... A gospel singer, bro, who even says in her own shit, I sold my soul to the devil. She makes a song called The Dark Horse, which is definitely worshiping the devil. In that video, she shows a man wearing an eye patch, one eye. That's the symbol of the Antichrist in Islam. He's wearing a chain that says Allah in Arabic, this character in her music video. You can pull it up. And then this guy goes up to Katy Perry. Katy Perry embodies Pharaoh. Pharaoh remembers the character. Pharaoh is the character that said he's this. We'll get copyrighted. Who said that he's God, Uh okay? And in the original version of this video, the guy's wearing a chain that says Allah, which means God in all three languages. I showed you how in the last episode. Go watch the last episode, folks. And she zaps him with magic and disintegrates the guy wearing Allah on his necklace, which means God in Arabic, Elah in Hebrew, Right, Allah in uh, Aramaic, the language of Christ. So she zaps this guy. She's embodying Pharaoh, who says, I am God in the human form, and destroys this man who's wearing that chain. Someone caught on to it. They made a big thing. There was a big uproar in the Muslim world, and then she edited it out of the video. Really? Okay. That's the history of Dark Horse. Wow. I'm coming at you like a dark horse because they shapeshift. They love reptilian. That's where the reptilian shit comes from. Yeah. The Prophet Muhammad said, if you ever enter a home and you see a snake inside your house, Before you kill the snake, you know, like to get it out, open the door of the house and warn the snake three times. If you don't leave, I'm going to kill you. If you don't leave, I'm going to kill you. If you don't leave, I'm going to kill you. Because it could be a jinn that is in that snake. They shapeshift. This goes back to the whole alien thing. (laughs) You understand? Yeah. (laughs) But she's singing about that. And in the video, you see shapeshifting. You see her zap the guy with magic. She's singing about magic. We know that magic is forbidden in the Abrahamic faiths. Mm -hmm. During Babylon, God sent two angels to test humanity. And they taught man at the price of selling the hereafter. Because he says, we taught man that which they should not learn. But if they were willing to trade their eternity for it, they were given knowledge that could be used to cause divorce and do all kinds of other crazy shit. And the occult is all about that bro it goes back to the time of solomon he found out what was going on they were making manuscripts he rounded up all the manuscripts and supposedly legend has it he buried under what is today the temple mount and when the knights of templar came supposedly they found those manuscripts which gave them the knowledge that they have to create everything that we have today the banking system everything came from that supposedly again this is again what i'm studying and what people Mm believe scholars of history and theology right but it all goes back to solomon bro peace be upon him one of the most important prophets to ever live he had dominion over the dimension of light and the dimension of darkness if you're suffering from the things i explained research the evil eye all you need is water that is charged with the words of god to cleanse yourself make intention pray to god directly you can remove it from you by his grace there's shit that goes on that most of us don't understand. Haunted houses, this, that. There is another world that is alive on this planet in a different dimension. I believe human beings have gotten to the point where not only do they work with them, they worship these beings. I believe the ancient Egyptians used to worship them. That's maybe how they built those pyramids. Solomon used them. And I believe that they figured a way to come into this dimension and they still have their powers when they do. So you're going to see aliens, folks. 
But it ain't aliens. There's demons here to convince you that God doesn't exist. If we see them. We might not. But if that happens, I promise you it ain't the aliens you're seeing in movies. We'll see. We'll see if this podcast stands the test of time. Hopefully, uh, we'll learn something soon. Hopefully, we both. That's what the guy's saying in, in uh, that Grush guy. He's saying that there's uh, there's bodies that are, that are recovered by the government with these crafts that they're finding. Hopefully, I wonder what those bodies are. Hopefully, we're not in orange jumpsuits, me and you, and uh, <laughs> chained. <laughs> Beck, thank you so much, man. You're you're always blowing my fucking mind with this shit. Um, tell people where they can follow you, where they can listen to your podcast, all that stuff. Your podcast is fucking amazing, by the way. Especially, I, I was telling you this morning, I, I loved your podcast with Eric Zuliger. That was a seriously, inc- that was incredible, man. Well, I try to, I try to be like you, man. You've done, like, you, you're doing what I, what I hope to get to, but I think I'm going a little bit more like just general conversations now. I am bringing in guests. I uh, rebranded just the Beck Lover, mm-hmm. the Beck Lover podcast. It was Beck Lover and the Comeback Team, but if they just type in B like boy, E like Edward, K like Kimberly, Beck Lover. It all pops up, becklover.com. If you want to watch my episodes on YouTube or any you know platform you can download a podcast on. But I am going to start doing a lot more of this stuff and uh, mm-hmm. talking about current events and not mm-hmm. just interviews. Because I think, you know, then I think people like you really need to just, like, we have such interesting perspectives. You're phenomenal with the way you, you know, you've read a lot, I can tell, bro. Like, you read all kinds of stuff, which is amazing, which makes you a really great host. Like, I've told you, I've been hosting a lot of shows and I, you're definitely my favorite, bro. I appreciate you, you, that. you let me talk, which I've been guilty of. My my people want to kill me. Like, shut the fuck up. Let the guests talk. Like, you're phenomenal at that, and you don't disrupt. Because I've learned with time too. Like, let let the the discourse go. Let let mm. the guests because you don't know where it's gonna go, and you might fuck it up at the right, you know, right. at the wrong moment. Right. But yeah, man, I'm wishing you great luck. The Danny Jones podcast. <laughs> AKA yeah, that's what your name. Concrete. You've done phenomenal work. Thank you for letting me come on here. We broke the internet last time, bro. And um, I hope that if anything comes out of this episode, people just maybe get something that they didn't know or maybe can look into something that really has impacted our world, whether you believe in God or not. Mm -hmm. These guys are saying they believe in other beings, right? These guys influence people that make policy. Some of the heads of the military were under these guys. Go read about Alistair Crowley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because Beck Lover says, and I don't know if that's the camera, we are the aliens. You heard it here, folks. Get your sage, get your dream catchers, get your fucking holy water. Good night, folks. <laughs>